What a lovely catch, hello. Mike one, Mike one, Mike one, Mike, Mike, one, Mike one. Mike what two, a catch, Mike oh two. yes. Stop. Final. And that's it, it's all over here. We're right towards the end of the contest, it's coming down to the wire. Tika, Tika.
Well, here we are. It's going to be the most fantastic of Fridays for the ACC Men's Premier Cup, Oman 2024. It's live from the Oman Cricket Academy. After 20 group games, we've got two fantastic semi-finals in store. All starting with this one, it's Nepal taking on the UAE. The two old rivals, desperate to get to the final. Nepal have had the upper hand over the best part of the last year, winning the majority of the key contests. But the UAE, with their power hitters, are looking very dangerous indeed. So, a little while ago, Mudassar Ali was down with the two captains for the toss. Let's go and find out what happened. Biggest rivalry of associate cricket. El Clasico Nepal taking on UAE. Men who matters the most. Captain of Nepal, Rohit Podel. Captain of UAE, Mohammed Wasim. And most importantly, we do have services of our match referee, Mr. Salim Shahid. Rohit will flip the coin and Wasim will call. Like with the toss, what have we decided and why? We are going to bowl first. Any specific reason? Not a, uh, any reason, but pitch is looking good. So just we have to keep basic things and uh, inshallah try to restrict them on the low total. Nepal versus SUA, it's a big match. So how is the preparation and how is the mood in the camp? Yeah, preparation is very good and camp everyone is confident. So inshallah we'll try to play good cricket. That's all. And what have you done with your side? Are there any changes? Yeah, we are going with the one change. Akif Raja is not playing. Junaid is back. All the best. Do well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rohit, your thoughts on batting first? Yeah, I think uh, if we have won the toss, we are chased, uh, especially. Uh, but to be honest, uh, the wicket will remain the same. I, I, I feel that uh, because the sun is uh, sun is very bright today. And yeah, the wicket will remain the same. And we want to put a good score on board to defend it. Yeah. Similar question, what I have asked you, Mohammed Wasim. The magnitude of this game is very high. So tell me how is the preparation and the mood in the camp? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, whenever we meet UAE, uh, it's, it's a very good good game, especially. And today is semi-final. Uh, uh, must win game for both both the teams. So yeah, I think both the whoever handles the pressure uh, calmly, I think he will win. And uh, yeah, everyone is looking forward to the, to this game. It's always a special feeling whenever the crowd comes in and back you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know that uh, whenever Nepal plays game, there's a lot of crowd, whether it's in Nepal or outside of Nepal. So yeah, we are very grateful to them. And team news? Yeah, one change. In place of Pratish DC, we have uh, Sompal Dai. All the best. Enjoy the occasion. Thank you. The news from the centre is that Captain Mohammed Wasim of UA has won the toss and he has opted to bowl first. <laughs> Big, big toss with these 10 a.m. starts. You would suspect the first 20 to 30 minutes there'll be some assistance. Let's get a look at the two starting 11s for Nepal. Just the one change. They've gone with their experience. I thought Pratish GC now only bowled the one over in their final group game. I thought he was outstanding. But they've stuck with Sampal Kami, who's been in a little bit of a wicked strout in recent times. And Karen KC, who's been in good form alongside Gulshan Ja. That will make up the same options for UAE. Just the one change. Out goes Akif Raja. And in comes Junaid Sadiq. And what that means is that they've gone with Omid Rahman. So they've gone with a little less experience. Who bowled nicely in that final game against Cambodia. Three overs, one for ten he had that day. And of course the leg breaks and spin options throughout the team. Mohamed Farouk, Ayan Afsal Khan, Basil Hamid. Plenty of bowling options. Going to be Kushal Bertel. And Asif Sheikh, the usual opening pairing for Nepal. Bertel's just been a little bit shy of runs as well. A bit out of form. He hasn't looked in his usual fluent touch. And he's got to an unwanted record to 11 ducks now in T20i cricket. Actually striking above Bertel. He's going with the ball. It's such a great rivalry, this one. The very best in the modern game. Two associate sides going head to head. Junaid Sadiq, just the one wicket for him. Expensive economy too, but he'll have helpful conditions this morning. And we're all set to go. It's the latest incarnation. The tetralogy becomes a pentology today. Four classic encounters last year. Here comes the fifth. Who will it be? 
And is that an immediate edge? It's an immediate wicket. It's Sadiq that strikes. Oh, what a beginning for UAE. What a toss it was to win. Just a feather of an edge through to the keeper. Fighter Shah who takes the catch. And Nepal's fans who've come in here in their hundreds are silenced early. Andrew Leonard joined by Mikhail Vaswami and Mikhail. What's just happened? Look at the reaction there of Burtel after he nicked that. He was only staring at the surface for as long as he could. What a start for UAE. Look at that for celebration. They couldn't have asked for a better beginning. They are celebrating. And uh, that reaction stating what this means to them. Kushal Burtel walks for a duck. Nepal in dire straits very early. Zero for one. of Nepal who's done such an incredible job since taking the leadership he comes to the crease much earlier than he would have liked it felt like a big toss and immediately Junaid Sadiq shows why it was beautiful outswinger and a fish outside the off stump immediate pressure on Nepal early what a toss to win here for Yui the ball just doing a bit look at that first wicket once again at the very first delivery got to shape out of uh, the right-handed batter just that faint feather edge Burtel got very good catch by Heather Shah was dying on him had to dive forward and down now this is a very very confident UAE outfit in the middle a wicket of the very first delivery Junaid Siddiq looking very good as well pressure on Paudel what a time for him the captain to walk out well it's doing all sorts isn't it it's always going to be lively the first 20 to 30 minutes. Both captains would have liked to have bowled first. Plenty of time for Nepal to get back into this contest, but a lot of the success that they've had against UAE in recent times has come on home soil. Very different here in Oman. And that's a very good point you've made, Andrew. Overall, a head to head. They've played nine matches when Nepal have won five and UAE won four. In fact, in the last four matches played in 2023, Nepal, in Nepal that is, Nepal have won three and UAE only one. But at this venue, it's been a 100% record for UAE, two in two. Oh, beauty. World-class bowling here from Sadiq. He started immaculately, isn't he? Perfect lines, perfect lengths, no shortage of shape too. Yeah, if you put the 50 overs contests into the mix as well, Nepal have swept UAE in recent times. In 2023, unbeaten against them in 50 over cricket in Nepal. And a lot of that is down to that 12th player, isn't it? The fans, 25, 30,000 we've seen at the TU. And there's not as many here today, but they'll still be a factor. First ones are going to go to the skipper and listen to the roar and the cheer for just a single. Come in in big numbers. Spoken to people who've flown from Dubai, from Qatar. A couple of guys have come across the Gulf from India. Some have even flown from Kathmandu. Oh yes, it's quite a turnout today for Nepal. It's the big semi-final. And after this match, whichever team wins, they'll be one game away from going for that big, big Asia Cup in 2025. The support is always in huge numbers when Nepal is playing in any part of the world. At the moment, the Nepal team wouldn't mind a little bit of roar and cheer. Maybe a wide. Too much movement outside the off stump. I suspect it's a big toss. It feels like that kind of morning, doesn't it? Oh yes. It's certainly having its impact early on. Andrew, how much of history plays a role in rivalries like Nepal versus UAE? We talk of India, Pakistan. They go back into history. They look at a head-to-head. For you, does this really come into any kind of significance? It's huge. Absolutely huge. These two sides, to be honest, on the field, they dislike each other. A lot of them are quite close friends off the pitch, but all it takes is 
a look back through some of those dates last year, 16th of March, 1st, 2nd of May, 27th of October, 3rd of November, all those games had a lot on them. End of the first, it's a wicked taking start for the UAE, it's two for one. Here's the two teams. Uh, Mikhail, you surprised they've gambled, I suppose, with youth and inexperience, Ahmed Rahman, in terms of somebody who doesn't have quite as much international pedigree yet. I'd be very, very happy with this change, to be very honest. Mohamed Wasim backing the young man, they say. You've got to hatch eggs and not smash eggs early on, and that's very important. Just 19 years of age, I watched him in uh, the Under-19 Asia Cup as well. It's only his third game. And he's done relatively well. Three wickets in the first outing against Scotland, if I'm not wrong. And in the last game as well, he had a wicket to his tally. So he's begun well. It's a bit different though, isn't it? With due respect to, to Scotland, that will have been played in front of a crowd of dozens at most at, in Dubai. It's the occasion, isn't it? Can he stand up? Big strapping lad for 19, isn't he? Broad shoulders, strong action. Shake the ball away from the two right-handers. That's why we've got a slip and kind of almost a, a short third close to catching in place. And what a start from him. Lovely strong action. And Lachlan Rajput, the new head coach of the UAE, he's backing his youth. And that's why he's there in the side, because he's been doing this consistently. Beat the bat, get the ball to move early on, and that's why this toss becomes all the more important. You've got the best conditions to bowl in. The morning conditions... Well, that's Azruddin uh, Qureshi, the strength and uh, conditioning coach of UAE. Had a chat with him the other day. Certainly setting some good targets and goals for the UAE side. They look a far more fitter and agile side now, Andrew. Compare this UAE team to the one, with due respect, to the, that went to the 2015 World Cup. There's brilliant players in that team. They weren't fit enough, they weren't strong enough. And, and for me, they didn't field well. It's a very, very different side now, Mikhail. Swing and a miss. And Old Powell trying to counteract that movement gets nowhere near it. It's a knot of UAE at a 20 team T20 World Cup. Remember, this is a side that beat New Zealand last year. It shows the strength and depth in associate cricket. Lots were talking about the reigning champions Nepal being favourites coming into today because of the recent pedigree. Oh, I'm not buying into that at all. You look at the power hitting of Wazim, the form that Asif. Khan has finally found in the T20 format. And the brilliance of Sharafu and the skills of these bowlers. Nepal will have to be at their very best today. And the first nine deliveries, it's all UAE. Oh yes, yeah, so just like the way they found the channels, very important you get that ball moving and talking very early after your captain has won the toss and decided to bowl first. Nepal tentative, they're not used to such starts. It's Burtel provides the fireworks up front. Asif shakes some elegant drives. In all of it, Asif has just been managed to be at the other end watching things unfold. A little fuller this time. Pedal will be quick between the wickets. Gets through for a single. Yeah, concerning times. Right across Nepal, 31 million people. In the land of the Himalayas and millions more, the diaspora, huge diaspora in Australia, in America, in Europe. Plenty here in the Gulf too are packing this ground. They'll be very nervous, not just in Kathmandu, in Pokhara and Bir Gunj, down in the Terai region. In Butwell, they'll be disappointed with their man, the Butwell boss, being dismissed early. In Bairawa, in Tilatama. Nervy times. Good fielding position, that isn't it? It's the new one in the modern game, sort of a deep backward point. Now, Andrew, if you've noticed the first 11 deliveries, there's not been a convincing shot from the middle of the mat so far. And that's why it just goes to show how well the UE bowlers have bowled. You've not seen a middle of the bat stroke. It's all been a little edgy and circumspect. 
Now, just for the benefit of our viewers, the last time both these teams met here at Turf One at the Oman Cricket Academy in the semi-finals of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup qualifiers, UAE beat Nepal by 68 runs to qualify for the T20 World Cup in 2022. It was here, this very same ground, just the same facility. Being honest, it was a hammering too. Won't be given as a wide. End of the second over. Nepal in all sorts early, it's four for one. Yeah, there's our two umpires, Rahul Asher uh, from Oman. And standing alongside him, now coming in to stand at the pavilion end of the ground, that is Morshad Ali Khan. Tabarek Dar from Hong Kong is our TV umpire. He'll do all the line decisions. This one at Kalidis from Malaysia, our reserve umpire. And for Nepal. The movement will only last about 15, 20 minutes. They've got to make a call as to when to attack. There's similarities to that 2022 game you're talking about too. Nepal unbeaten in the group stages, knocked out in the semi-final. They won the third place playoff. They won four from five. They didn't go to that T20 World Cup in 2022. I'm sure they'll want to erase those memories because it's a fresh start, a new day, and it's a completely different team two years on. They're a far more skilled side, far more talented as well. But for now, the UE all the way. Look at that. Only four runs in the first 13 deliveries. Makes room for himself. He had to counter attack and do something. And what a shot. Unleashes a maximum over extra cover. That's Mohamed Asu's shake for you. I'll tell you why this is a good shot, Mikhail. The ball is swinging away from you. So you want to try and hit in that direction. You don't want to come across it. Pull or a hook shot is going to get you into big trouble. So Sheikh cleverly recognises that, gives himself a bit of room outside the leg stump, which then allows him to free his arms and then get it up and over the offside. Not just good execution, but good thinking too. Got a long way in front to square that. Junaid Sadiq can get it up towards 140 kilometres an hour. That's an outstanding shot. what happens when he tries to pull the ball not as easy to implement well that's a good observation just not able to get into position and get that in front of mid wicket Brasif Sheikh had to do something different and the Nepali batters have realized they can't allow UAE to dominate much look at that makes room for himself creates that space gets that kind of license to go over extra cover region brilliant cricket Mohamed Asif Sheikh holds the aces here if he gets going he can certainly take Nepal to a strong position. Nepal need a partnership. 10 for 1. Yui Bola's breathing fire. Good bowling. He may well have hurt Asif Sheikh. He's tough. We'll have to walk it off. I'm not sure what part of him it's hit. Is it possibly the forearm? Very, very nasty. May even have come up towards the throat, the neck, the chest area, but clever, fiery bowling. He knows he's going to give himself room, so he follows him. Well, that hit him on the visor. They have just ricocheted off the gloves, but I reckon he'll have a concussion test as well. Maybe just went off the forearm onto the visor. Yeah, and I think that's what, you could see the pace was kind of taken out of the ball, wasn't it? So what if that was a full fledged impact straight on the visor? That could have been very nasty. But hopefully either the gloves or the forearm have done a little bit of their work in terms of taking the pace off. Never like seeing batters get hit. Immediately there's a bit of fire, there's a bit of bite in the contest, isn't there? No less than we expected. And the surface is certainly helping seamers. You always uh, looked at this wicket as one that has tilted towards the batters but today it's playing true to bowlers and just about giving the batsman a few anxious moments oh, this is fiery now I think this has come off the forearm Sadiq is going to go up with a massive appeal but for me my instinct is this is a very good decision 
Morshed Ali Khan is in the hot seat. We'll have the benefit of the replay. He won't have had that. Sadiq was absolutely convinced. What's it hit? Just came off the forearm, yes. In fact, shoulder. The right shoulder. Hmm, they were very excited. Look at Junaid. That's what happens when you take a wicket very early. You feel all the wickets belong to you. I'll tell you why this is such a good decision. Because look at the pressure that was piled on him by both Sadiq and the keeper. You're absolutely entitled to appeal, but there's always a little bit of a line. You can't keep going. Outstanding umpiring, I have to say, throughout this tournament. The entirety of our match officials have been brilliant. And another decision right on the money. Shake survives. Walker attempted, but not quite where he wanted it turned into a low full toss. So Sheik will keep the strike. It's 11 for 1. Omid Rehman into his second. 19 year old. Looking good. Look at the carry. It's not been easy for the batters this first 10 15 minutes. Testing times for them. And UAE are making full use of conditions. Mikhail, you spent quite a bit of time in the UAE. Their production supply line through the academies that they have. It's not just in Sharjah, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Fujairah up to Ajman, there's cricket all across the seven Emirates. Probably, maybe with the exception they pal, there probably isn't another associate churning out young players in such quantity and such quality. Big swing and a miss. This young bowler is 19 years of age. He's probably coming into the biggest arena he's ever played in. He looks like he's been out there for 200 games, not just two. Oh yes, the kind of composure he's showing and character. I did mention this with Mudassar in my last stint with him in the previous game that Omid Rehman has not been challenged yet by a batter. Now Asif Sheikh is trying to go after his bowling but what he's done consistently is that he's not deviated from that length. And that line has remained somewhere around middle and off. Now Asif Sheikh is making intentions very clear. This is going to be a good contest. Oh, that's wrapped on the pads. That could be very close. And that's been given. Omid Rehman's persistence has finally been rewarded. This is brilliant bowling by UAE. On fire, both Sadiq and Rahman. Absolutely brilliant. 19 years of age. They've unearthed an absolute gem here. And credit to Mohamed Wazim and the coaching staff to go with him in such a big occasion. I wonder how much of this was to do with Sadiq shaking him up. Not quite into the position. Sheikh knew it didn't hit the inside edge. It's hit the back pad. It's going to crash into middle and off. And UAE right now of Nepal in all sorts of trouble. Asif Sheikh, the latest to go for eight. It's 11 for two. Sandeep Jura to the crease. This is the flexibility in that order that Monty Desai wants to show. The reason why he's not gone a Gulshan Jha 
or a Kushal Mala yet, as he wants to save them for the spinners. He wants to take down Ayan Khan later in the contest. Nepal are going to need to do that in a big way because you've got two fiery fast bowlers here. Bowling at no shortage of pace with a huge amount of skill. They're getting good assistance through the air, a little bit off the surface as well. Right now, Nepal have no answers. Feels like deja vu, a huge amount of it to 2022. Nepal are going to have to show great character and resilience to get back into this contest. Jora, he's been shy of runs as well. No doubt about this LBW. Hitting probably what, middle enough. Oh, that was dead straight. Playing across the line, head dropping. That should have been an easy decision there for Rahul Asher. And look at Omid Rehman. Credit to the think tank of UAE, the captain, to give him another game after an impressive outing. Remember, Akif Raja has been left off for Omid Rehman and the 19-year-old grabbing his opportunity over here. He's looking for that glory ball a bit too much. Just need to keep things simple when the conditions are helping you like this. You know, the challenge for Nepal isn't just in the first 15 to 20 minutes here when the ball's going to move round. The problem is if they don't get a good score on the ball, this man here, Mohamed Wazim, alongside Alassane Sharafu, the tournament's leading run scorer, Asif Khan, they are a devastating trio. Remember, no Vriti Aravind in the squad. That was the big surprise for UAE. Sandeep Jura will get off the mark, single down to deep third. Very difficult to win a contest in a power play. You can lose it in Nepal. They're in real trouble here. The good thing for them is that they had their captain, Rohit Baudel, to maybe absorb pressure, but what's the approach from here on for Nepal? That remains the question. Remember, the six overs of the power play remain key because after that, run scoring gets a little bit more difficult. What's going on through Baudel's mind? That remains the question. A new batter at the other end, not much score for the batters and the team as well. Into the fourth, only 13 on the board, two big wickets back in the dugout. Brilliant polling. Four outstanding, exceptional overs from the incredibly experienced Junaid Sadiq and this youngster that they found from nowhere, Ahmed Rahman. It's 13 for two. Ali Nasir, first change in bowling. Edged and edged away for four. Why, oh why, would you take the slip out, Mohamed Wazim? You were all over Nepal. It should have been the third wicket. Instead, it's four runs. Nepal needs that slice of luck. The slip was being persisted with for the first four overs. And for Ali Nasir, it's been removed. And Sandeep Jora finds an edge. Much needed four runs there. You're going to say it's easy to say this with hindsight. It's not with hindsight. You have the opposition 13 for two after four overs. Not a single batter has looked in any way comfortable. He's a fine bowler too, this young man. And it's edged away again. Well, insult to injury. Won't go to the boundary. But you have to get a slip in. Surely Mohamed Wazim is going to get a catcher into place. Wickets the currency. Brilliant fielding effort as well. I reckon that was Omid Rehman. Just for a moment, it looked like it was just running down the third, but got his body down at the right time and has done very well there. Commitment, discipline, that's what UAE has been this morning. 
Omid Rahman with that fielding effort. First change here for UAE. What I've liked about Nepal is, despite the loss of two wickets, their approach hasn't changed much, Andrew. It's attack, counter-attack, and just about break the shackles. Yeah, follows him. Very good batting. So, a very good morning. Warm welcome along. It's a massive clash. Andrew Leonard here alongside Mikhail Viswani. Mikhail, how much are you enjoying this contest? Looking forward to it. You expected a close one, but right now UAE, well, they're all over Nepal. Oh, yes. Uh, it's one anticipated clash that we're all looking forward to. Age-old rivalry, as we talk about, but UAE all over Nepal at this stage. I reckon the toss has played a very crucial role. And despite that, it's the kind of response your bowlers put in after winning the toss. They've been brilliant. Nicely driven. Yeah, I think the key thing for me here is, is how different a side is this one now for Nepal, led by Rohit Powell to two years ago. There will be plenty of players, I think seven, maybe six or seven of the 11 from 2022 that lost that T20 World Cup qualifier semi-final at this ground. It was a heavy defeat, 68 runs. You'd have to suspect there'll be a few demons. Paolo, he's such an impressive young leader. I agree with you, he's important out there. And then the two left-handers to come. Can these guys get through the quicks and allow Kushal Mala and Gulshan Ja to show their power against the likes of Ayan Khan, and particularly the leg spinner. Oh yes, this is a good bowling attack of UAE, let me tell you. They're strong across all lines, they have backups, they have options, they have variety. Great talent in their ranks. Sandeep Jora and Rohit Padil will continue to apply pressure on the bowlers. They are on the lookout for runs. Nicely picked up. Quite out of the middle of the bat. It's going to challenge the boundary but won't quite get there. Be a couple for Jora. Now that decision to give him some time in the middle earlier in the tournament. Will it come off and pay off for Monty Desai? Five overs bowled. 21 for two. It does not matter wherever you are in this world. You're getting this wonderful visuals from the Oman Cricket Academy. And all you need to do is pick up your phones. Whether it is iOS, whether it is Android, just unlock cricket. Download the ACC app right now. You could also visit us on www.asiancricket.org. A lot of, lot of action and offer. Interviews, match highlights, interesting clips. The next five, it's going to be me, Pranav Mehta, and alongside me, it's going to be Modassar. Modassar, what do you make of the match? 22 for 2, 5.1. Advantage UAE. Good morning, Pranav, and good morning to all of our viewers. Winning the toss, and the right decision made by Manu Vaseem, and the bowler doing a pretty good job. Yes, 22 for the loss of two, five overs, is the final over of the power play. And as of now, Rohit and Sandeep, so getting those boundaries, they also need to make sure to just stitch that partnership, play a couple of overs, try to settle in. Anything above 160, 170 will be a very good total on this track. In the air, playing away from the body, nicely done, couple of runs on offer. Excellent running between the wickets, complementing each other quite well with Sandeep and Rohit. It's that kind of a time. You have those final five, six deliveries to the power play. You just want to have those maximum number of runs that you can get in those five, six deliveries to release the pressure. Because they haven't made the most of the first five overs. And that's where they want to get something to their favor. 
Yeah, absolutely. Even if they can get another six or eight runs in the next four deliveries without losing a wicket. That is brilliant running between the wicket. No two thoughts about it. I believe they would want to have a look at those batters, whether they've crossed the line, they've made it to their field, they're getting the facts right. Technology plays a big role in the modern day cricket. Well, absolutely, and good to see Rahul and Murshad Ali taking a close look. Good job done by the captain Rohit. Basics are right. Brilliant, brilliant running between the wicket. Both Bordel, Sandeep Jora, two very fit cricketers for Nepal. And they need more of this. Just around 15 overs to go in the first innings. They haven't had this high start that they would have wanted to in their favor. They can make a comeback here. Oh, exceptional. He has been incredible with the new ball, the youngster, Omid Rahman, asking some ser serious questions to the batters. The relief and pulling at the right channel has been the key for Omid Rahman. And no, this is, let's not forget, these are wonderful wickets to bat on. And if as a bowler you're shining and you're shining as bright as Omid Rahman, you've done a lot of things right. Not just the release, but the pace to offer, the movement to offer. He's been traveling good quality. Sandeep Jora and Rohit Bordel. Into the pass, nicely managed. Good move of the wrist. Not trying to hit it hard. Trying to make sure to play in the gap. Running hard. Converting those singles into doubles. Look at those viewers. It's a full pack. It's the Oman Cricket Academy and they're enjoying the cricket here. 90% of the viewership is from Nepal. Any thoughts on that? It has been a one-way traffic if we talk about the crowd coming into the stadium and supporting the teams. It's all about the Rhino Army of Nepal. So a couple of wickets down. They're back in their place. Connects well. Goes over the covers. Fielder. One bounce, two bounce. Chased by Alishan Sharafu. A pretty good job. Thought of the third run, but no chance of that. What is incredible to see is that mishits are going to stay inside and these viewers are coming from all parts of Oman. Huge matches I've not witnessed, viewership such as this, but I will tell you what, later in the afternoon, the local side Oman is going to be playing and I'm expecting a lot of viewership. Those signages, those banners, brilliant, adds colour, adds flavour. They are the one reason why Nepal is on the rise. An associate cricket in the air, cut chased by Basil Hamid. One more time, running hard. Boundaries are hard to come, but they are making sure to convert those singles into doubles. At the end of power play, Nepal 30 for the loss of two, Rohit on four, Sandeep on 16. Omid Rahman, look at those figures, 3 overs, 1 for 13 in the all-important semi-finale. This is the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024 and UAE have started with the right foot forward. Ali Nasser continuing on for 8 runs. Good to see a partnership stitching between these two, Rohit and Sandeep. 
they have lost both the openers the last time they met against each other at this venue it was in 2022 two years ago now it's a new team if you talk about nepal as well as the uae with three members from 2022 making it to 2024 for uae junaid mohammad wasim connects and goes towards the top corner a good looking shot which is a maximum a much needed maximum sandeep jora what an incredible strike yes the power play hasn't been in their favor scoring at just 5 runs per over but immediately after the power play sandeep jora has taken a liking of alina siria striking straight through the ground second year of oman cricket it was in the arc to start off with and sandeep jora throwing the kitchen sink at it what wonderful striking counter attack this is what needed batting a strike rate of 200 complementing each other quite well rotating the strike is rohit and taking on the bowlers is sandeep a good counter attack we are witnessing from rohit and sandeep you might be a good cricketer you might have quality to offer but such are the kind of matches where you can be a hero you can be a national hero it's a semi finale it's a big match pressure match and immediately it is sandeep jora who has stood up to the pressure things weren't working in their favor but now he's come to party in front of these are the big matches the intensity level is always high the team is on the back foot and all of a sudden you come in and you get those quick runs and this is how you make a name of for yourself at this bigger platform and doing good job is sandeep but what a start provided by junaid and omid rahman now it's time for ali and other bowlers to bowl well and get couple of more wickets ali nazir rohit potel wants to get away and he is not able to at the moment he's been struggling 5 of 17 deliveries but what's been interesting mother sir is you are just 200 250 kilometers away from oman neighboring country and you see nepal right across but this is home away from home for nepal with the viewership with the fan base that is there in the ground with the noise that they are offering something really dif different and difficult for uae he is struggling he is struggling and the finger goes up rohit knows a top edge excellent piece of bowling hitting the deck hard and an excellent take by the wicket keeper haider was hisha wicket number 3 goes down for nepal the captain needed to stand up it was rohit podel he was struggling in the middle and wonderful delivery from ali nazir a little bit of a deviation and a brilliant juggling catch by the wicket keeper will send rohit podel back to the hut a struggling innings of 5 of 18 deliveries is going to an end courtesy of a good catch by said haider as it is nepal 39 38 for the loss of 3 wickets now winning the toss and opting to bowl first the bowlers responded to the call of wasim this is what happened in the power play junaid started off brilliantly peach of delivery faint edge and a good low catch taken by haider wasisha he has been busy throughout the day and this was one of the best shot we have witnessed from asif the youngster omid getting better off asif then couple of edges going past haider wasisha a good partnership stitch between these two but on the previous delivery we have seen the back of rohit podel the partnership which was looking good came to an end ali nasir and haider wasisha doing the work for uae nepal 38 for the loss of 3 tough times and in comes kushal malla to give that support a much needed support to sandeep who is looking tremendous out there in the middle where the other batter struggled on this track sandeep has a different plans and in comes 
the wonder boy of UAE, Ayan Abdul Khan. So far, four matches in this tournament, seven wickets to his name and economy of 5.40, an average of 11.57. All hopes will be on this boy. He needs to get rid of Sandeep, wherein Sandeep will be looking to get a few more runs for his team. Nicely negotiated on the front foot. You're talking about the crowd, the previous over, Pranav. Even if Nepal is playing against UAE, in UAE, they always make sure to outnumber the local supporters. Always there for the team. Comes in numbers to support Nepal. Four matches for Kushal Malla. Strike rate is the key. But I think three wickets down, he will take his own time out there in the middle. It's tough times for Nepal. No, no brainer. They'll need to stretch a partnership here. And this is the key. They need to run hard. They need to make sure that rotation of strike is on regular intervals. And in the process, if they can look for odd boundaries, it'll be so much, so much valuable for Nepal. Sandeep Jora and Kushal Mala. Mr. Dependable is still in the hut, waiting to come out. Dipendra Singh Airi. The crowd will be waiting to see and witness Dipendra Singh Airi, especially with the kind of tournament that he has had here in Oman. Oh, absolutely. And they bat very deep down the orders. So the key for these two batters is to stay for another five, six overs. Good field setup, an attacking field. So far, a tight spell, a tight over from Ayan Khan. Driven nicely, no stopping, valiant effort. Looking good, looking cool out there in the middle is Sandeep. Sandeep Jora, he's been standing tall to the task here. Yes, you have made Nepal struggle. And no batter has looked as comfortable as Sandeep Jora. He's making things happen for Nepal. Wonderful strike. Just wide of covers and that fielder at long off. Diving and diving, diving in vain. What incredible strike. To start off, it was all along the ground. Along the beautiful turf of Oman Cricket Academy. And no chance whatsoever. And once again, making sure that he rotates strike. To wind that over up. Seven runs of this first over of Ayan Khan. 45 for three at the end of eight, Nepal. And going for seven runs in his first over and in comes the leggy Farooq Mohman back of length there was an opportunity to get a boundary not middle properly just a single one man who's looking completely different out there in the middle is Sandeep quickly moves to 29 we have seen some glorious looking shot from the blade of Sandeep Farooq Mohman Five wickets to his name, economy of seven runs per over. Made a debut in this tournament for UAE. Terrific bowler and a brilliant fielder. He's been a wicket taker, Mohamed Farooq. That economy also not that bad, just shade over seven. They need wickets here. Yes, they've got Nepal three down. Runs not too many on the board, but this is a champion Nepalese side. Let's not forget, they make things happen. Right at the end, they can turn the game over, and that's where Nepal, UAE needs to get wickets consistently. Absolutely, and 
keeping in mind the likes of Irie and Gulshan Jha yet to come. And if they can lay that foundation, Sandeep and Malav. Another 5-6 overs, get 40-50 runs. Nowhere near the ball, trying to hit it hard. A wayward throw, just a single. Next six overs, if they can get another 40, and of 15, if they can manage to get 90 on board, Irie and Gulshanja, last five overs, you never know, they can add 50, 60, or 70 runs in those last five overs. In my opinion, I feel otherwise, and the reason for that is that these are bigger boundaries, and if something is not from the right center of the bat, the meat of the bat. It's going to stay in. And especially because Nepal have lost early wickets, what they need to do is they need to continuously play shots. One per over, not many. Something that is in their arc, something that is in their range. And that's where an eight run, seven run over will be very valuable. Just a reminder, Pranav, this is the same venue where Iri got those six sixes in an over. So whether it's a 60 meters boundary or 70 meters boundary, we all know how massive hits he can hit. Wonderful, wonderful fielding. It is the captain at the boundary, Mohammad Wasim. This is exactly my point. This was struck very well from the bat of Kushal Mala. Might not have got the meat of the bat. And this is where it could have just been the difference. Five probably valuable runs saved by Mohammad Wasim. What an incredible effort in the air, pushing it back right at the right moment, losing contact and then falling out of the ground. This is wonderful stuff. We did see Muhammad Wasim saving runs previously in this game, but this is better than all of them. Believe it's just going to be runs. Yes, it is declared as runs. So five runs saved from that of Muhammad Wasim. Nepal have got to 50 at the end of nine, but what a wonderful match this is in process. Played away from the body, not connected quite well, but full mark should be given to the superman, the captain of UAE, Wasim, certainly saving some runs for his team. Shalmala, the left hand, right hand combination, giving that support to Sandeep. And changing the bowling, it's Basil Hamid, the off-break bowler, so just one over for Ayan Afzal Khan, keeping in mind his left-hander out there in the middle. Quickly making the change. Basil Hamid, four wickets in four games, an economy on a higher side, 8.65. Misses the line completely and the change works in favour of UAE. Basil Hamid comes in and gets rid of Mala, trying to go big, misses the line, three of four balls. This is incredible. He silenced the crowd here. Basil Hamid. What an incredible delivery from Basil Hamid. And he's got the back of Kushal Malla. It was the arm ball. Went in with the angle to the left-hander. And no chance whatsoever for the left-hander. He's missed the line. And Basil Hamid has hit the stumps. So the timber has been disturbed. And Kushal Malla is going to be walking back for three of five deliveries. These are serious trouble times as Nepal have lost their fourth wicket for just 50 on the board at 9.1. With that, it will be drinks on offer for both these sides, a little bit of a breather and a little bit of re-evaluation of how they want to go ahead in the game. So that's the wicket that is in play today. It is a wonderful wicket at the Oman Cricket Academy. And this is the all-important semi-finale between the United Arab Emirates and Nepal. A little bit of grass cover just to make sure that the ball holds on and just does not break. A little bit of an offer for the bowlers, especially the pacers, a little bit for the spinners as well. But all importantly, it is the batters who are going to be enjoying stroke making here. 
the wicket is only going to get better as the day progresses and that's where both these semi finales especially the first one nepal versus uae is going to be a very interesting contest at the moment it is nepal in all sorts of trouble just 50 on the board and they've lost four wickets in the process 9.1 overs still just around 11 overs to go and they'll need to get a lot of things right here and all important and something that is going to get, bring in a lot of buzz here at the Oman Cricket Academy the man in the center the man who hit six sixes in an over Dipendra Singh Airy and he'll have a lot of work to do in the middle look at that average 50.5 and strike rate can't get better eight sixes out of those six came in a single over Airy will be facing Basil Hamid nicely managed off the mark with that single but what a change by Muhammad Wasim keeping in mind left hander on strike giving it to off break bowler it makes sense and this is where you need to be on your toes as a captain always not afraid to make those quick changes is Muhammad Wasim so keeping things tight is Basil Hamid one thing that has to be in consideration is that those six sixes in an over came against a part-time bowler from Qatar who had ba barely bowled in that game and this is the quality attack of UAE Mohamed Wasim ever so pumped ever so practical has come with the best bowling side in this semi-finale and that has stood tall throughout this first inning so far yes the class of Dipendra Singh Airy cannot be questioned he's a quality player one of the top all-rounders in the world and that's where he's improved on his ranking ICC rankings as well but this is a good contest very good contest between two champion sides especially keeping in mind whenever the team is in trouble Airy and Gulshan Jad they are the key almost bailed out the team they were in a bit of bother in a couple of games Gulshan Jad what a knock we have witnessed played for his team in this tournament with that single next successful over comes to an end Basil going for just a couple of runs a wicket to his name Nepal the halfway stage of the first inning 52 for the loss of four With that, it is going to be Mikhail Wasmani joining me in the com box. As the leg spin of Farooq continues, UAE have been all over Nepal at the moment. Four wickets down Nepal and a lot of, in a lot of trouble. Mikhail, what do you make? Oh yes, it's been a one-way contest right now. This is a very good strike over the bowler's head. Nepal need more of this. They need to counter-attack. Sandeep Jora looking good in the middle. Two batters batting on different kind of wickets at the moment. Everybody from Nepal struggling on this wicket, whereas Sandeep Jora is making the most of this wonderful batting conditions here at the Oman Cricket Academy. And the crowds have enjoyed cricket here in Oman, especially the Nepali fans. Oh yes, they have come in huge numbers, but Nepal need a move on. Just over 15, the 11th over. I like this strike. It was a measured hit, one bounce into the ropes. Nepal have gone quiet in this match so far. That's a good hit again. A couple of more runs coming in here, one for the arm. It's Airi, he'll complete it comfortably. What I've liked about the batting of Sandeep Jora is he's not been slogging, he's been playing calculative. And that's where this has been a standout performance from Sandeep Jora, 37 of 28 deliveries. A lot depends on Farooq at the moment. He's been 
delivering the goods for UAE. Farooq Mohammad, the form bowler in this tournament, an average of 18. He's got the wickets as well. What an addition to the side. That projected score, they need to get to somewhere close to 150. We need a magical effort in the middle. That was there to be hit. Misses out, six coming off this over. 11 gone, it's 58 for four. This is a very strong bowling effort and performance by UE. Nepal needs a partnership and that too at a very fast rate. 54 deliveries left. How much can they get Ayan to continue? Nicely bowled. Soft hands. But Ayan will do the fielding. What more can you ask for? Yes, the leadership skills of Mohamed Wasim. But he's standing at covers. One of the prime positions in any form of cricket he stopped a lot of runs there in this game itself and that's what is creating even more pressure on Nepal yet to get to 60 11.1 overs done in this game look at that UAE have been brilliant this morning win the toss bowl first get the wickets take the catches they've got everything right Nepal have been wrong-footed. Looking for a big one, looking for a big one, looking for a big one, getting a big one. That's a massive strike from the bat of Sandeep Jora, dancing down the wicket. And it's gone on the top tier of the Oman Cricket Academy. What wonderful batting from Sandeep Jora here. Nepal need more of this by far. This has been the longest and the biggest six I have seen in this tournament. Everything right about this shot. Gave everything he had against the turn. Look at that follow through. It's out of here. Sandeep Jora is fighting a lone battle. And just look at the impact he's made. Out of Nepal 65, more than 70% of the score has come from the bat of Sandeep Jora. Which means the remaining four batters failed to get going. He's been fighting that lone battle. Good use of the feet here. Look at the advancement that he achieved right into the danger area, ahead of the danger area as well. And caught the UAE players into a huddle quickly as well after that hit. Just imagine how important it is for the UAE team also to ensure that the momentum does not shift back to Nepal. Jora has some plans in the middle and he would have discussed that with Airi. If both of them can stitch a partnership, Pranav, we are looking at something in excess of 130 here uh, and that will not be a bad score. This is a semi-final, few early wickets and it could be an even contest. You need runs on board. Always the ideal condition in crucial matches. Nicely bowled. Just checking that length over there. Quick single, good cricket all around. What has been concerning from the likes of Nepal is that Sandeep Jora has got those odd boundaries every now and then. But yet... They have not been able to capitalize on those overs, converted into a big one. There was a boundary in the previous over, it just conceded probably six or seven runs. This time, it has been eight with two balls to go. Yes, no. And this is where both these batters need to discuss what's the way forward. Will Aire have to play the second foil, the second fiddle, get to the other end, give Jora more of the strike? Nicely played, another single. This has been a good over so far. They ended with 10 runs coming to them. 12 gone. Make your pardon, 9. 12 gone, 67 for 4.
Right, time to unlock cricket. Download the ACC app right now on your Android and iOS. You can also do so by following our website www.asiancricket.org. Get a load on on everything around Asian cricket. The elite nations, test playing nations, the associate nations. Follow your teams and players and join the ACC folklore. Right, Pranav. What's a good score here to stop UAE from going into the finals? I'm going to say a number that the Nepalese fans will not like at the moment because I feel something in excess of 150, 160 is probably a good score. This is a wonderful wicket to bat on. A little bit of opportunity to the leg spinner. We're going to be tough on him if you're going to be saying that that's going to be that was an opportunity. Valiant effort. Omid Rahman doing the fielding in the deep. Nepal just about finding a move on. Sandeep has been the highlight of the Nepal innings today. 45 of 34. Dipendra has just walked out. UE have been tidy. El Clasico living, living up to its hype. All of a sudden, it is the UE camp which is feeling the pressure. Because they realize that Nepal are here to mean business. They want to make the most of these remaining almost around eight overs. Sensible. Irie has come out with a plan. He is allowing Jora to play the role of the aggressor. Over to you, Jora. He says, get to the other end. This is a very, very important wicket of Sandeep Jora. He needs to go big in terms of runs, in terms of the innings probably needs to play the entire first innings out. At the moment, he looks fatigued. It's been a hot, humid day. And it's not easy as a cricketer. There is very little wind that's blowing across the ground. Nothing in favor of the sports people. That takes the outside edge. Much needed runs here. Welcome boundary for Nepal. Sandeep continues to play an aggressive brand of cricket. He moves to 49. So often we say that luck favours the brave and this is a prime example of it. Incredible batting from Sandeep Jora. One shot of his 50 at the moment. Yes, getting the outside edge but in this format, in this phase and especially when Sandeep Jora is batting, you're never going to be having a slip. And that's when this is always going to be a boundary. Slashing, slashing hard, just as it is said to be done. Puts that away. He's not able to get rid of it. Oh, this could be close. Yes, no, Ira had come halfway down the pitch. 13 gone, it's 75 for 4. Well, this has been an impressive bowling performance. Junaid, Omed and Ali, all of them amongst wickets. Basil Hamid as well in his first over accounted for a wicket. That's how UAE have turned up this morning. Win, toss, bowl first, take the top order wickets of Nepal and control proceedings in the middle. Ayre trying to convert that into a run scoring opportunity. Ten, 10 runs per over from here gets to 140. Don't think that's going to be enough. Into the pads, a big, big shout. And this is not great visuals if you're a Nepalese fan because the all-star Dipendra Singh Airy is going to be walking back to the dugout. He might have got six sixes in a match in an over previously in the tournament. But on this occasion, he's going to be departing back early. And it's that man, Ayan Afzal Khan, once again. He is turning out to be a match winner for UAE. Not quite sure this was the best shot to offer. Pitched in line, crashing into the stump, playing across Dipendra Singh Airi. Was caught wrong-footed over there and Morshad Ali Khan 
raising that dreaded finger. UAE celebrate half the side back in the dugout for Nepal. Big wicket. Irie walks back for five. Nepal in dire straits. It's 75 for five. And what a time for this man to come out, Gulshan Kumar Jha. Look at that strike rate, that average. Everything about this tournament has uh, given an indication that Gulshan Jha has taken a liking towards it. But now the situation is different. The demands are different. Can he live up to the pressure as well? Down the leg side. will have to be rebold. I believe it's go all going to be one more over of spin from UAE before they go into their prime pace attack, which has done all the damage to Nepal. I'll tell you what, Gulshan Jha gave a match-winning performance against UAE last year in two must-win games. One during the final game of the League 2, which helped Nepal secure their place in the World Cup qualifiers in Zimbabwe. Another during the ACC Men's Premier Cup final. But today, the situation is completely different, but a similar demand. It's a double-edged sword when you have so many people coming live to watch you out, supporting you. Of the outside edge, I believe it is, just behind the wicketkeeper. That will bring Sandeep Jora on strike. Yes, it's off the bat. So, Mikhail, what I was trying to say, it's a double-edged sword. So many people coming to support you. Sometimes it can be in your favour. On occasions, it can go against you as well. I'd always want to believe it's going to go in favour if the home side has support. What a delivery. What an over. Brilliant. Ayan Afzal Khan continues to impress. 14 gone at 77 for 5. Gulshan Jha in the middle with Sandeep Jora, who has fought a lone battle in this innings for Nepal. Farooq into his final over. What has happened, Mikhail, is that Sandeep Jora was on 49 in the, at the end of 12th over. In two overs, he's been still there at 49, not getting a lot of strike. And that's where it's, it's been... All UE here at the Oman Cricket Academy ground number one. Absolutely, Pranav. Couldn't agree more with you over here. Farooq, wicketless, but he's been impressive. Worked away. Stand and applaud Sandeep Jora for what has been a very fine innings under pressure. Never easy when the chips are down, but the man has stood up and stood out in the big semi final. But he has job to do and work to do. Very well made 50, uh, 50 of 39. That's a somber dugout of Nepal. Quite understandably as well. They, they enjoy their cricket, don't they? The Nepalese fans always come out in large numbers. Runs coming in singles here for Nepal. UAE will say, let it come. We have no problems with it. Goes Ariel. And this goes straight in the hands of Mohamed Wasim. 
Farooq gets his first. Sandeep, after getting to 50, departs. And this innings is falling apart for Nepal. They lose their sixth. This poor cricket. Very poor cricket from Sandeep Jora. Yes, he got to 50. But there was a lot of expectations on his shoulders. Immediately after that, had to make sure that Nepal gets to a big score. And that's not going to be happening here at the Oman Cricket Academy ground number one as he departs for exactly 50. And Nepal are in all sorts of trouble. 50 or 40 deliveries, four boundaries and, and a couple of maximums to his name. And just when he had to accelerate and get, the, get a better strike rate, he's departed back to the dugout. And Nepal are in some serious trouble here. 80 for the loss of six, Nepal. He can bat. Sompal Kami has not got much uh, of a bat in this tournament so far, but he can use the long handle as well. Nepal struggling. 80 for 6. UE all over them. Everyone amongst wickets. That's been the story this morning. Just chips that towards third. He's running the first run fast. But that'll be it. Just wonder what Nepal could have done different to not find themselves in this situation. Curious fans, anxious fans. A lot of these fans would have made it to the center of the ground for the very first time. And that's where Nepal needs to get things right in the remaining five overs. This one's chipped in the air as well, but it has enough bat on it to land over extra cover into the administrative block. That's a very good hit by Gulshanja. Nepal need more of it. That's elegance and power together. It was the googly to start off with. And just chipped to make sure that there is enough bat on it to get to the administrative block. This is incredible batting. Gulchanja making things count here. 87 for the loss of six at the end of 15. Here we go, final five overs. This in particular feels like a big over. Maybe a last chance to take down a part-time spinner. Andrew Leonard rejoining you, Mudassar Ali. Mudassar, your boys UAE flying, sensational. They've been outstanding with the ball. Oh yes, and once again, we have witnessed how important is the role of toss. The right decision made by Wasim. It all depends on this man, Gulshan Ja. If he stays till the final ball, he can take Nepal past 120, 130. They came in numbers to support their team. It's always good to see people coming and backing a national team. Sompal, Kami, run a ball too for him. A little surprised they didn't go with Karen KC at 8. I'll tell you why. Kami's just chipped it down to long off. We'll see Karen KC now. The reason I thought we'd see KC in next, he's got that explosive power, and Nepal are miles behind the eight ball. Basil Amid has a second. He's got a great record against the men from the Himalayas who are in real, real trouble. Crumbling under the pressure of the batters of Nepal. And one more time, he was brought back into the attack and straight away getting a wicket on his third delivery of his second over. He's playing away, half-hearted shot, and a good catch taken by Farooq Mohman. Wicket number seven goes down. Sompal adding just a couple of runs, 89 for the loss of seven. Well, a 
very glum looking dugout right now, understandably. Monty Desai is, he's seen a lot in the 15 months he's been in charge. And what about this man, the Valentine's Day hero, all those years ago, broad shoulders, what can he provide? Loves hitting the ball straight down the ground, loves hitting over long on. UE have been disciplined though, very, very effective. Their seamers excellent and backed up by the spinners. Just haven't been able to get after them at all, Nepal. Gulshan Ja and Karen KC for me, Nemu Dasser, the last hope. Indeed, especially the man at the non-striker and Gulshan Ja who has already got a maximum. A young lad, he has been a rescue ranger in the past as well for Nepal. But someone needs to give that support from the other end as well. A quicker delivery, excellent job of his own bowling. It's a couple of runs, a wicket in this over for Basil Hamid. 16 overs done, 89 for the loss of 7. Four overs left. Gulshan Jha has got a marvellous record against the UAE. And he loves crunch big time situations. I just wondered would they consider throwing him up the order, particularly with the ball shaping away from the right handers. He's got a chance now in the last four. Ali Nazir returns. What are Nepal thinking? Are they thinking somehow scraping to 130? I haven't seen anything like that even close to being defended thus far and UAE have a much vaunted power packed batting lineup. Especially keeping in mind the track, the next is the lineup of UAE. Alishan Sharfu, Asif Khan and the captain are in brilliant touch with the bat. For Nepal to go beyond that 125-130, lot depends of Gulshanja and Karan Kesi. Karan Casey known for hitting those big, big maximums on strike. Beats the outside edge. Just all done the basics right. And Sadiq and the youngster and just his third game. Omid Rahman, superb. Really, really good. Don't think the leg spinner bowled particularly well. He got away with a few, but he did enough. Ayan Khan came back having been hit for a few. And then Ali Nazir just continues to go from strength to strength in international cricket. Brilliance of this, this modern UAE side. They're homegrown, come through the youth academies that are all across UAE. And this rivalry, well, Nepal have had the upper hand in it in 2023. UAE determined to say 2024 is going to be our year. And people should understand back home, this is how you build your future team. Plenty of chances were given to youngsters. Sure example is of Ayan Khan. Ali Shan Sharfu now Omid Rahman getting a long run, doing extremely well with the new ball for UAE. And Ali Nasir, a true all rounder to have in your side. A single's not enough at the moment, and uh, the fans who've come, not just the diaspora who live here in Oman, but they've flown across from Qatar, from Dubai, spoke to a couple there that drove from Abu Dhabi this morning. 4 a.m. they left, and they were here at 9 a.m., got across the border, over they came. They've come with high hopes and dreams of a return to the Asia Cup, a return to play against India and Pakistan, but right now, UAE all over them, dominating this, car, st this contest from start to finish. And you can't help but argue 
They deserve to be in the position they're in. UAE have been brilliant. How important is the role of fans? Especially if you talk about associate cricket. They are one of the best. The Rhino army. Always there for the national heroes. Always make sure to come in numbers to support the national team. And as of now, they need one or two big overs. So far it has been a decent over from Ali Nasir. And even that, nothing special in that over, but good enough. No boundaries, five singles from it. And Nepal, even if they get 10 and over from here, they won't even get to 125. It's 94 for seven. Beautiful scenes here in Al Emirat. Emirati fans will be much happier than those packing the ground from Nepal, though. Picture perfect day. Just had a quick chat to the groundsman in my overs off in the middle as Junaid Sadiq returns. He said there was a lot of dew overnight because of all the rain that's been about over the last five or six days. And ja gets it. Over the man at extra cover, wide of the man at mid-off. He gets four. He's the last hope. He needs to finish with a real bang. Not a good idea. Keeping in mind, mid-off, the circle, and fuller delivery, and nicely managed by Gulshanja. Under pressure, getting that boundary, nicely managed. He knows where exactly are the fielder's station. A much-needed boundary from the blade of Gulshanja. Inching closer. That 100 mark. One for nine runs a wicket to his name. His first spell, Junaid, has been welcomed with the boundary. And the challenge for, for Nepal is even, let's say, one big over here. Let's say 15 comes off this. It doesn't really get them anywhere near to a competitive score. They need three massive overs. They need a, a finish like Oman had in that crazy contest against Kuwait that decided the semi-final spots. I think they need 40 off the remaining 16 balls here. 140 would just give them a sniff. I cannot see 120, 130 being close to enough. Absolutely. Keeping in mind modern day cricket shorter format, 16 balls, 40 runs, quite achievable. But for that, Gulshanja needs to stay till the end. Short, wide, carved away. Oh, it's Karen KC. Never rule this man out. He's done it all for Nepal. The hundreds up with a maximum. Are we going to see a late surge? The sixes are raised into the air. As two of the Nepal flags. Offering the pace to Karan KC. It's a crime. Virt offered. Trying to shock. Karan Casey with that bumper, an ordinary delivery and rightly punished by Karan Casey. Extraordinary shot, a maximum. It's a good looking over. We were talking about 15 runs. They have already got 11 in three balls. Nails the block hole in a collision. Sadiq never backs down. If that keeper throws that ball, I'll tell you, we could have had a real incident in our hands. Both players are allowed to hold their line and credit to the keeper. He's not thrown it because it wouldn't really have been within the spirit for me. And good teamwork, good sportsmanship from the young keeper despite getting a glare from his fast bowler. That's a serious collision. There's nothing in it, but you can't throw that ball. He's done the right thing. And nothing wrong in it. Tap and straight away he was in his line running towards that non-striker. And it's a good job done by the on-field empire Rahul Usher. 17.4 overs, 12 last two balls, 
Of this over Gulshan on strike. Can he get a maximum here? Just going to be a single. Sadiq and KC nearly collide again. Ja wants the second. KC says no. Give me one more against the big fast bowler. I reckon they're the two biggest units. Not just in these two teams, maybe in the tournament. They're both massive men, aren't they, Junaid Sadiq and Karen KC? That was like a rugby collision there. And luckily, it was a Junaid. If it was Omid Rahman, he could have been in trouble. A good contest, trying to make a comeback into this game, trying to post a respectable total. It's Gulshan Jai and Karan Kesi. What a partnership between these two. Really clever bowling. Little leg cutter. It's a big over. It's the biggest of the innings, but it's still only 14 from it. They need two massive ones to finish Nepal. Can they get up to 140? It's 108 for seven. Here's the seven wickets to fall. Look at this start from the Pacers. Sadiq pumped up as always. What a bowler he is. And then the back pad crashed into Plum as they come. Rohit Powell, oh, he's going to be so disappointed with his innings, isn't he? Mudassar, five off 18. Then Kushal Mala coming across the line of one after a, a brilliant stop from Mohamed Wazim. Who cut off a six? Dependr Singh Iri, the hero of the tournament for Nepal, trapped LBW. Jora batted so, so well, but then he too found long on. And we won't get the last wicket. Back live with you now. Two overs remain. As KC gets a single. You can Ja find a couple of maximums? Where is he going to target? Especially against Ali Nasir. He loves to hit the deck hard, bowl those bumpers. It would be a good idea if he can opt to go towards that extra cover, over the extra cover or deep mid-wicket. Good chances for Gulshan Jat to get some runs. But this youngster, he has been in good form with the ball. Ali Nasir. of bowling especially against Gulshanja bowling those cutters keeping in mind long off was inside the 30 yard circle a change of pace nicely done still four legal deliveries left in this over they need to find a couple of boundaries or maximums here that's his favorite zone Casey straight down the ground usually it's at the TU in Kathmandu where he smashes those maximums into the fans this time it's here in Muscat he'll keep fighting for Nepal what an arc he's playing for his team coming at number nine the second maximum made a mistake a bit fuller and look at that shot from number nine no chance for the long off Rescue Ranger, Karan Casey for Nepal. He has been the most extraordinary servant to the game. Can he keep going, Casey? It's another slower one. This time the inside edge. This time it chops on. It was there to be hit, but he's come across it. And again, every time a boundary comes, UAE fight back. Brilliant bowling. Oh, absolutely, and he has been brave, Ali Nasir, not afraid to bowl. Another slow one, a bit fuller, trying to go big inside edge onto his leg stick. But what an inning he has played for his team. A good partnership comes to an end. Karan Casey managing those all-important 17 runs with the help of two maximum of just 12 deliveries, 116 for the loss of eight.
Abhan Ashbahara at number 10. He'll have a big roll with the ball later. Now, can he get Ja on to strike? Not from this ball. The big problem with this delivery now. You probably have to think of two, four, or six. There's a view for the fans. Packed in in their hundreds. What a view it is as well. I think Gulshan Jazz has just, just come down to Bahara and said two, four, or six. Almost doesn't mind if he gets out trying to hit a six here because Ja has to face every ball of the final over. It will be sensible if he can just play out this uh, delivery. Last 11 balls, they have got 22 runs, but in the process, they have lost current Casey. 116 on board. We're talking about 135, 140. Wise decision, denying that single Gulshan Ja. A good comeback in this over from Ali Nasir, going for eight in his first three balls, then a wicket, and a couple of dot deliveries. End of over number 19, it's 116 for the loss of eight. Final over the first innings. As we see the fielders inside the circle, four of them, all the protections down the ground. What can Ja do? Junaid Sadiq with the final. Now turns down the single. You can understand why, being honest, Bahara and indeed Raj Banshi to follow, they offer very, very little with the bat. So it's really all on Gulshan Jazz's shoulders here. Twos, fours, and sixes, the only result. 116 on board, eight wickets down, and look at that support they are getting from the crowd. Still backing the national heroes, Gulshan Ja. Five legal deliveries left in this innings. Can he find a couple of maximums here? He got 14 in the previous over of Junaid. Slashed away, Manatee, backward point. He's going to hold on. Brilliant bowling, brilliant plans. Everything the UAE have done has been outstanding. It's the slower ball bouncer. He couldn't feel like he could play an alternative shot. Can't take a single at this stage. And Nepal may well very now be bowled out inside their 20 overs. Smart field setup and bowling as, according to the field, is Junay Siddiq. And no mistake by... Vishnu Sukumaran, the last hope, Gulshanja departs, managing 20 of 16 balls, Nepal, 116 for the loss of 9. Lalit Rajabanchi, number 11. Nepal, well, to use a bit of snooker parlance, they're in need of snookers from here. They're in real trouble. UAE have been exceptional. Sadiq leading the way as always. And they'll just really probably be hoping maybe for three more singles after this. Baharan Rajabanchi in no way prolific with the bats and I suspect it is a massive toss that we saw this morning, a heavy dew. It's now burning off. You can see the heat waves there. So batting will get easier, particularly for the afternoon game. 
but with Asif Khan, Mohammed Wazim, Alassane Sharafu, and even the likes of Basil Amid and others to follow. You cannot see 120 being even close to enough. Can you, Madasser? Is there any way back into this contest for Nepal? I think after that wicket going down of current case, at that stage when current was out there in the middle, we thought 135, 140 is quite achievable to post on this track. But as of now, they are struggling to go beyond that 120. They do have the skills in the bowling department. and They are a very good fielding unit. Power play will be the key in the second innings. And they need to get rid of Ali Shan and Wasim and Asif Khan quite early in the innings. Lovely slower ball. Look at that. Very little change of action. He's a guy who's capable of, of hitting a batter with a bouncer at close to 140. As we saw Asif Sheikh get roughed up by Sadiq. But this has been an exceptional performance. He's a real hero across the Himalayas, is Monty Desai. He's, he's come in and revolutionized their game, their belief. He talks about the one ball battles. He's very pragmatic when they lose. And it will be no different today if UAE chose this, chase this total down. But there's still a team in development, still a team in learning. Thought Jora played exceptionally, but he got very, very little support. UAE have been too good thus far. So they're going to take a single. Bahara won't even think of a second because he'd be walked out by Mohamed Wazim. It'll be exactly a run of ball that the UAE will need to advance to the final. Job done for those men in pink and blue. They have been superb. They've been sublime. They've been superlative. They've done half the job. But really, it's probably 90% of it. If they bat anything close to expectations, they'll surely be in the final in two days' time. What a rivalry we are witnessing between these two sides, winning the toss and inviting Nepal to post a total. Nepal were kept below 120 in their allotted 20 overs. A happy unit. The bowlers responded to the call of the captain of UAE. Yunes Siddiqui was outstanding. So was Omid Rahman with the new ball. Now it's up to the batters of UAE to come out in the second innings and to get those 120 runs and sail into that finals. Yeah, just three batters get to double figures. Never easy when your top order reads 085. I thought Rohit Powell in particular battled, didn't he? Five off 18, you're almost better getting out early. Jora played wonderfully well. Attacked and counter-attacked and probably just couldn't get enough of the strike at some points, that partnership with Irie and then Ja, he just couldn't seem to get on. Irie couldn't produce the heroics he had as, has all tournament, and despite contributions from Ja and Kami, it's 1-1-9 one, one, for 9. Six bowlers used by Muhammad Wasim, Junaid and Omid Rahman were quite impressive in the power play. Four overs, 26 runs, a couple of wickets for Junaid, Omid Rahman, the youngster, the newcomer, three overs going for just 13, and he has got that big wicket of Asif. After that, Alina Sirayan, Muhammad Farooq, Basil, they made sure to keep the things tight. Though Ali went for some runs, got a couple of wickets, so was Basil Hamid, two overs, four runs, couple of wickets to his name, and a wicket each for Ayan Afzal and Mohamed Farooq. Get a look at the best of the highlights. going to be lots of wickets in here, including this one. Bertel, back-to-back -back ducks for him. It was a beauty. Not a lot he could have done with it. Had to play it, you felt. And Shake with a lovely shot for six, sitting with the swing there was prodigious movement he was then trapped lbw jora had that moment of fortune early if was he to slip in at that point well you can only imagine what the card may have read for nepal because they relied heavily upon sundeep jora's fine 50 thought he played nicely picked the ball up pretty well including that big six out towards the pavilion there's the occasional highlight for nepal but really the wickets they just fell too regularly and that has been the poor Nepal and look at that effort coming from Mohammed Wasim and then the change doing wonders getting the big wicket of Mala but they do have the services of Sandeep who was looking good especially against Ayan Abdul Khan and thick outside edge going past the wicket keeper some fortunate and lucky runs and this was a poor shot from Irie and Farooq getting better off for Sandeep straight away after reaching to his milestone 50 runs then came in Gulshanja Inside out, brilliant hit for a maximum. 
The problem with a shot like that, it's such a good shot. It shows there's still plenty of runs in the pitch. Wasn't like it was a real battle out there throughout, just out disciplined, only six extras in the entire innings. Sadiq led the way in a big way despite that one being carved away by Karen KC. There was the collision. And great credit. Really want to pay tribute to the keeper. Inside Mohammed Haider Shah. Well done to him. Easily could have thrown that. We would have had a very nasty incident if it was a run out because he probably would have needed to be called back with the spirit of the game in mind. That was Gulshan Jazz dismissal. All the plans, all the tactics, all the strategies from Sadiq as the leader of the attack and that man, the captain, who led very well, Mohammed Wazim, has left Nepal in an invidious position. They're in all sorts of trouble. They'll need an exceptional, perhaps a best ever bowling performance to restrict UAE and their much vaunted batting lineup to less than 120. It looks a good batting surface to me. Can Nepal pull a rabbit from the hat? Find out with us in about 10 minutes' time.
It's been UAE all the way in the first semi-final between Nepal and the United Arab Emirates. The equation is fair and square here for Mohamed Wasim and his boys. Nepal will have to do something special if they have to pocket this win and storm into the final. They've been off color with the bat, absolutely clueless. And they've lost out to a very disciplined, tidy effort by the UAE bowlers. This after they won the toss and decided to bowl first. That required run rate, 6 and over. 9 out of 10 times, it's a regulation chase. And that's why the Nepal bowlers will have to be very, very strong up front, accounting for a quick wicket or two early on. And they'll be up against an informed batting side. Alishan Sharafu needs no introduction. Look at that strike rate and look at that average in this tournament. 9 sixes, 20 fours, 188 runs, one of the highest run getters so far in the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. And giving him company, the dependable, the destroyer, Mohamed Wasim. Strike rate, 188, 158 runs. They will be doing the bulk of the scoring. They are the dangerous batters up front and they can finish things off and give UAE the edge in a matter of overs. Karan Casey got 17 with the bat. He's had a stop-start tournament with the ball. Rested in one, three wickets for him. Nepal and UAE have everything to play for. Rahul Usher signals play, slip in place. You're all set for ball one. Almost dragged there onto the stumps. That's a good delivery. Just caught Sharafu by surprise. And Mikhail with me is Pranav Mehta. It's almost afternoon time here in Amman. Really expecting UAE to play that free-flowing game. That has been their strength throughout the innings, throughout the tournament rather. Need to get things right. Can't play, can't be playing that fetching game. First runs on the board for UAE. Sharafu off the mark. It looks all easy at the moment. They need wickets. Nepal need wickets here. Shade below 120 is what they've got. And if they are to restricting UAE, they cannot be allowing them to play the full quota of 20 overs. And to stop them from doing that, it is going to be that man in the center. The captain, Mohamed Wasim. Such an elegant player, Mikhail. Elegant destroyer, should I say. Short and wide, put away. Don't bother running. He's off the mark with the four. And that's how UAE have played their cricket. With precision and style. He means business here. Mohamed Wasim. The powerhouse of UAE. So much relies on him. And every time that he, he gets runs, everything looks so simple, so easy. The ball does travel a mile from his bat. That's why Nepal has to be careful. They don't have the cushion of runs. They can't err in line and length. He has a slip in place, KC. That's a much better delivery. But all of a sudden, Pranav, there's absolutely no movement in the air or off the surface. It's become so good to bat on. You know, it'll only get better as the day progresses. Although, in my opinion, at the moment, Karan KC not releasing the ball to his benefit. He's hitting the deck hard. And that's where... He's not able to extract that kind of movement. Wickets. That's the only word that Nepal are looking at. And these are moments that Nepal would hope go their way. You need that slice of luck. A faint edge over here would have been 5 for 1. The Nepal fans... Just so passionate about their team and their cricket. And that was, or rather that had four written all over. Half-tracker. A half-tracker from Karan Casey. Needs to get things right here, Karan Casey. Yeah, you've got to be sensible now as a, as a player in the middle, as a batter in the middle. Take a single, get the odd boundary and just have a stroll in the park and get to 120. After over number one, it's six for no loss.
சோம்பால் காமி உல்காமன் he is going to be coming in from the pavilion end he holds the key here in my opinion sompal kami on to the pads might have just flicked it to the wicket keeper wickets 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 is what nepal want that's the only way they can move ahead in this tournament they are up against two batters who will just not waste time in making full use of the six overs clearly nepal on the back foot in the semi final restricted to 119 picks it and deposits that over square leg that's mohammad wasim for you it's looking very easy here for you a they are running away with this game they are in a hurry mohammad wasim the class of mohammad wasim and he's making things happen here in the all important semi finale and it's happening against nepal you might have almost 500 fans encouraging you cheering you in the stadium but you still have to get things right and especially when you're against the quality of mohammad wasim if you're not going to be hitting the right line and length you're going to be punished second boundary for mohammad wasim this time as maximum he's been castled what a comeback what a delivery sompal kami you beauty that was an absolute jaffa gap between bat and pads nepal celebrates they needed this break they are coming back into the game what a wicket what a wicket is the prize wicket of mohammad wasim he is going to be walking back to the pavilion but sopal kami take a bow nepal needed to stand up and sopal kami has made it happen here for nepal look at that delivery just angling it in into the right hander and the timber has been disturbed what an incredible movement for nepal they're fighting back and they're fighting back strong into this game mohammad wasim back walks back for 11 of 7 deliveries and it's going to be trouble times for ue way the way sompal kami is bowling at the moment 12 for 1 ue Vishnu Sukumaran not the best of strike rates but he's got just a few runs what a time for him to come out big semi final captain mohammad wasim after hitting a 6 and a 4 is back in the dugout uae 12 for 1 nepal are fighting back slip in place for the left handed batter four on the off inside the circle a backward point conventional point covers and mid off two on the on side mid on and short fine Another wicket here for Nepal and I tell you what this game is wide open. Here we go. Very good delivery. Tentative push off the mark with a single of Vishnu. The way ahead is picking up wickets for Nepal that's a no brainer right now. And that's exactly why they need to pick up wickets. And I'll tell you why we should really compliment and commend Sompal Kami's effort. Now before that wicket of mohammad wasim he was carted for a huge six over mid wicket pranav now look at the length of the delivery you don't want to be bowling short over here the surface is so good enough time mohammad wasim didn't even have to go on the back foot he did it on the front foot we'll take a look at the wicket after this delivery another very good delivery and then after that he realized what's the length he should be bowling and the next delivery look how well he executed that much forward got that ball to tail in a little bit this is a bowler's delight to rattle the stumps especially after being hit for a six the crowd is elevated it's been now it's been seriously noisy here at the oman cricket academy 
Sambal Gami. Plays that over mid wicket. Work to do for Miron. Batters will quickly get the second as well. Everyone's in a hurry in the middle. Two was done. 15 for one. UAE. AC to continue. Nine of his first. Nicely bowled. These are the channels. These are the channels you should be bowling at. So much depends on current KC. The experience of current KC. They've got that early wicket. Courtesy of Sompal Kami. And now it all comes down to current KC. If he can get a wicket, maybe a couple of wickets. UAE can be in serious trouble. Another good delivery. Only three Nepali batters got into double figures. You had uh, Kushal Malla getting to 50. And then, uh, beg your pardon, Sandeep Jora getting to 50. And then you had Karan Casey as well getting 17. And Gulshan Jha getting 20. The rest didn't even manage going into double figures and this is where Nepal should take a leaf out of their problems. They have to keep the UE batters as well in such a situation, not allow them. I'll tell you what, they are all looking for out and out because when the when Nepal was batting, we could only see four and six placards. Shot and they will rotate the strike. Running has been spot on by UAE in this tournament and they'll be continuing to do that. One thing that happens is UAE does not have that scoreboard pressure which could very well be there if the scoreboard was somewhere around 150, 155. And now that they have got shade below 120, they'll need to create that pressure by picking up wickets. Maybe two, three wickets, maybe four wickets in the power play. Karun Casey, he has a huge follow fan following behind him. He has the backing of the crowd. Can he make something happen here? Shot, and this will be rotated as well. They're not in a hurry, UAE. They do realize that the only way Nepal can make a comeback into this game is by wickets, and that's exactly what they're defending at the moment. You made a good point, Pranav. There's no scoreboard pressure. The dot ball percentage, even if it increases, UAE will not have to sweat over it. And the concern here for Rohit Padel is should he attack or should he get a little defensive because the total is not that big. Slip has been removed. And all the fielders are almost standing on the edge of the 30-yard circle. They need to stop those singles to apply more pressure. Because as of now, you don't get the big boundary. You get the single get to the other end. Fuller delivery down the ground. Very good shot. This is a fast outfield. It'll be a chase. And the ball wins it. As a businessman, you're looking for value for money. As a cricketer, you're looking for value for shots. And that's what is on offer here at the Oman Cricket Academy. Runs on offer. And at the moment, it is against against the liking of the captain of Nepal, Rohit Podal. It, it might be making him sweat here with the way UAE, UAE have started. And that's been the story, right? A couple of boundaries and the pressure is back on Nepal. Had they been defending something close to 180-190, it would have been Nepal on top. Funny game is cricket. What a match. 
They have played nine times. Three gone, it's 21 for one. Right, just coming back to the contest, the rivalry, the El Clasico that's been the much hyped and talked about matchup between these two sides. Nepal have won five times and UAE four. If UAE win this, it's going to be even Stevens. Nicely played. Protection in the deep. They'll get a single. One thing that you, Nepal needs to get right here is that, yes, they have to fend those boundaries because those boundaries are really precious. But along with that, they will have, they will need to spare maybe a couple of fielders, maybe three fielders, to protect those singles. They can't be coming in from closer to the circle and giving away those soft, deft touches from the UAE batters. It's a different kind of start. You've, you've seen Alishan going all guns blazing here in this tournament. On this occasion, five of six deliveries. Oh yes, uh, and that's that's the problem here for Rohit Bordel. Too many vacant spaces to defend 120 runs. And to top it up, the surface has gotten even better in the second innings. There is still a little bit of movement. Sumbhal Kami has extracted it. He's got the better of Mohamed Wasim, the captain of UAE. And that's where Karan Casey who hasn't been in the mix of things here in this tournament so far. He's a premium player for Nepal. He's a legend with the way he performs. Would want to get things right. Driven, driven well all along the ground. This will take a stopping. And that's some great piece of fielding. If he's managed to keep that in, that's a great effort here. Admit off. Oh, that's brilliant again. And no surprise for guessing. Who's that at mid-off to put that desperate dive? But I reckon we'll have to wait and watch and get a confirmation as well. Burtel there. Acrobatic stuff. Commitment at its very best. Was his hand just about touching the rope on impact with the ball. Too close. Maybe another angle should give us more confirmation on this. Because from here it seems inconclusive. Yeah, this would be better. But it's touch and go for the Empire. We have to once again just go back and forth. Now this can be a little inconclusive as well because the body is blocking. What happens here, Mikhail? Does the benefit of doubt go to the fielder? Does it go to the batter? In scenarios like this, when it's 50-50? I'd want to believe it will just stay with the fielder there. But uh, uh, this again will be referred and seen very closely. Yeah, so far, uh, just quickly also remind of viewers that this is the first semi-final on uh, Turf 1 at Oman Cricket Academy. Nepal playing UAE and Nepal managed 119 for 9 in their 20. UAE have lost Mohamed Wasim but are looking good to chase it down. We still await confirmation on this decision. Oh, it's been given for. That's a very fine decision by the end of it. Always believe that the ball really got big on him. It was a wonderful drive to start off. And Burtel, slight bit too late to react. Probably should have put in the dive a little earlier. What these boundaries do is they break that pressure. The momentum flows into the hands of Yui and they'll feel even more relaxed. Exactly. The required run rate 5.76. They can easily afford a couple of dot deliveries. There's absolutely no panic in the UA dressing room. Never easy for Nepal after being restricted to 119 at the halfway stage. Come out with spring in their feet. You know, they will be the morale would be a little down, but they have to fight back. 
whom do you look forward to yes it's probably a way below par score probably 30 maybe 40 35 40 runs below par but they have to make a match out of this nepal whom do you think you, they can count on all 11 i look at it that way everybody has to turn up match winner whoever's given the ball should go out there and get the wickets sampal has been quick he's been uh, very accurate as well i've liked the way he's turned up this afternoon another quick single that's been the problem they're standing on the edge of the 30 yard circle and all vishnu is doing absorbing the pressure and just about getting singles four gone is 27 for one In times of adversity, turn to Dipendra Singh Airi. What a tournament he's having with bat and ball. An economy of 6.1, wicket 6. Two player of the match awards. Partnership breaker. He's been everywhere. Would I be wrong in saying that it's not the cricketer Dipendra Singh Airi that Nepal requires. Nepal requires a magician Dipendra Singh Airi at the moment. Such are the times for them. But the condition and situation completely in favor of UE at the moment. I keep calling him Dependable Singh Airi. That's my new name for him. Mr. Dependable for Nepal. Dot balls. This will help Nepal. This will do way a lot of good to them make it four in a row this is great start for Dipendra Singh Airi you can understand the role that Vishnu has been sent with go out there get the singles and keep the scoreboard ticking and hold one end and that's why I feel for him the fielders need to just come in a little bit more to stop that single which they've done well four dots pressure piling on fuller delivery poor one through the gap work to do for Rohit, does well to keep it in a couple of runs here. This will not help. They have to be spot on. They lead one of those perfect kind of performances if they are going to restrict UAE this afternoon. 29 on the board already. And a full toss was never going to be aiding them. Excellent work, nonetheless, from the captain, Rohit. And a single will wind it up for Dipendra Singh Airi. Three runs from that over of Dipendra. 30 for the loss of one wicket, UAE. Well, you can unlock cricket by downloading the Asian Cricket Council app. Do that now on iOS and Google Play. AsianCricket.org too. Well, Nepal have won in the power play. They would love two. And that's a very good looking shot. First time we've seen a real bit of aggression from Vishnu. He gets four. One of the best shots we have seen from the blade of Vishnu Sukumaran. Not a bit fuller, but it was an extraordinary shot. Just managing to get cleared that mid-off. Played with full face of the blade. A good-looking shot, a much-needed boundary. A partnership flourishing between these two at the right time.
Yeah, Cammy's found the one breakthrough and he's needed that. He's been wicketless for quite a bit now. Ball with good fluency, good pace, but there's just a few signs now, Mudassar, aren't there, that this pitch is starting to flatten out. No real movement through the air anymore. It's going to take something extraordinary, maybe the occasion, the situation for Nepal to get the 12th player onto their back and help them somehow maybe make this into a game. UAE should win this, what, nine times out of ten, nine and a half times out of ten from here. But in knockout cricket, in pressure cricket, Funny things happen, but not like that. Short, wide, slashed away. Six for Sharafu. This tends to happen when you are defending a modest total like 120. The bowler is trying out too many things. A good looking shot from Alishan Sharafu. Virth offered and not afraid to go over the point. Strong forearms and wrist helping Alishan Sharafu to get a maximum. So good over, 11 runs. The starting three deliveries, Vishnu, run ball 19, Alishan. Sharafu just faced seven deliveries in the, in the power play, moves to 11 with that maximum. Much better line and length this time. Yeah, the issue is, a little burst like that, 11 from three deliveries, and all of a sudden there's no pressure. No pressure for the next two or three overs. I've seen average scores in and around 170 at this ground, 120, it's just nowhere near enough. Well, absolutely, and as a captain, you need to think out of the box. In the third over, he has been quite expensive, though he has got that wicket of Muhammad Wasim. Good piece of fielding. Backward point, Jora. Athletic. I don't think Nepal batted particularly badly. I know it's going to sound strange. I just thought UAE were outstanding in helpful conditions with the ball. Especially the fast bowlers in the power play. Yes, conditions were favorable for the fast bowling, but the fast bowler, you also need to make sure to bowl the right channel, right area. Especially the likes of Omid Rahman, youngster playing his third match, that too against a side like Nepal. He was superb in the power play. Yeah, he looked like he'd been out there all his life, didn't he? Not just his third T20I, first game in front of a big crowd. Dealt with everything so well. They found another gem. There's plenty of them in the UAE through that Emirati development system of late. Power play's done. It's 43 for one. So the power play's done. Dependra Singh already into the attack. Well, he's had a very, very good tournament, to put it lightly. What miracles has he got up his sleeve with his off breaks here? 43 for the loss of one bulk of the runs came from the blade of Vishnu Sukumaran. Trying to cut hard. A quick single has been taken. Outrageous is back on strike, especially against Irie. It will be a good... Contest between bat and ball. Off-break bowler against Alishan Sharfu, who loves to go after the off-break bowlers. And this is a chance for Dipendra Iri. I'll tell you another thing that's really impressed me is Iri hairs after this, and they know not to take on the second. Look at the speed of Iri. Need to get him measured. <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. Lightning across the turf. And Vishnu knew well not to take him on, but in the group stages against Hong Kong, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, impressive as they were, rain shortened contest against Nepal and Malaysia, Nepal outfielded, out ran between the wickets, and out skilled their opposition. This has been nicely driven, but Jao will cut it off, keep it to just a single. I thought the UAE fielded really, really well, led by Wazim. It's the first time they've really been matched in that department, Nepal. They came back pretty well, 
especially if you talk about the fielding of UAE, they have dropped four catches against Oman. After that, they look completely different side in the fielding department. A sensible piece of batting, not trying to get those quick runs, especially against someone like Dipendra Singh Airi, showing some respect to Vishnu and Alishan Sharafu. After losing Mohamed Wasim, Vishnu has promoted up the order yet again. He needs to get those big runs for his team. It's a good start for Iri for from it, but it's not enough. Nepal need wickets, they need them now. Seven have been bowled, 47 for one. Look at the best of the power play. It was a nervy start, wasn't there? Then a vintage Mohammed was aimed shot before he was cleaned up by Kami. That brought the oval to life, didn't it? Brought the Nepal fans that have packed in here in colour with their signs and splendour right into the game. But then it hasn't come particularly quickly, but it's been just good enough, hasn't it? From the left-hand, right-hand combination. Sharif, who's had less of the strike. And Vishnu, who's been a bit shy of runs, has been good. Gulshan Jap into the attack. Surprise, no Lalit Rajbanshi yet as Iri. Oh, he's a live wire. Can never take your eyes off him. Nearly created a chance from nothing there. A good point raised by you. They should have given this over to a spinner. As I do understand, it's a left-hand, right-hand combination, but... Lalit is one of your wicket takers, but persisting with gentle medium pace. Gulchanja, he got those crucial runs coming down the order. Can he get a couple of wickets here? The movement is gone from the ball. What devastated Nepal in the first innings with the 10 a.m. start, the heavy dew overnight, the, well, the crazy and chaotic weather we've seen in the Gulf over the last month or so, let alone the last week. It moved all over the place early, like a banana through the air. Nepal aren't getting that benefit now. They got a little bit for the first over or two. So I think you surely have to go to your primary bowlers and your premier spinner. It's a lot at Rajbanchi, even if there's a left-hander in. This is flicked around the corner, man down there, but over his head. Bahara can't cut it off. The bouncer rushed Vishnu, but it's a maximum. It's six more to the total. But extra pace helping Vishnu Sukumaran and UAE to go past 50. A no look shot from Vishnu Sukumaran. Though there was a field station in the deep, an easy picking and a much needed maximum. What happens when you go for those wickets? No other option for the bowlers. They're just defending 120. Now 66 needed of 75 balls. Cruising quite well. Excellent, excellent comeback. Quickly changing his line and length. Ball just going past the wood of Vishnu Sukumaran. And in a normal T20I like we've seen throughout this ACC Premier Cup, You'd think that this bowling effort thus far m might be good enough to have Nepal right in the contest. The run rate at the moment is just hovering around seven, which isn't extreme. The issue is Nepal don't have 150 on the board. If they did, it would be game on. Chipped towards the fielder! My, oh my, Kushal Bertel! What a catch! The crowd comes back to insane life! In one of the moments of the tournament, it might not be enough, 
but it may just spark Nepal into life. Bertel, you beauty. Crowd going bonkers here. The man who was looking good with the bat, walking back. Man in 28, run a ball. Three, four, and a six. Oh, what a extraordinary catch taken by Bhurtel. One of the greatest catch we have witnessed in this tournament. Wanted to just clear that mid off, but look at that run from Bhurtel keeping eyes on the ball till the last. One of the best catches of this ACC Men's Premier Cup 2024 54 for the loss of two UAE. Well, one more look at this. Sensational. He's tried to go inside out, isn't he? He's probably looking over extra, but didn't get it out of the middle. Bertel, I'm not sure how he's got there, let alone held on. Flying through the air like Superman. The man from Butwell, no runs today, but what a catch. It brings Asif Khan to the crease. He wants a single. Irene in swiftly. Can't affect the run out. Eight of being bold. It's a wicket taking over. 55 for two. Well, the left-hander's gone, so in comes the premier spinner. Nepal are still beyond behind in this game, but they'll never stop fighting. And a moment of brilliance from Kushal Bertel has just given them maybe something to work with. The only way they can parlay that into a, a genuine match is to get Asif Khan early. You've got to get him before he gets in. If he gets in, this game will be done in the 14th over. He'll get the long levers out. The sixes will be found with regularity. And Raj Banshi has a good record against Khan too. Oh, what a start. A little bit of grip beats the outside edge. Welcome to Oman Cricket Academy, says Lalit. Each of a delivery. Caught in two minds. Get a slip in position. Keep on attacking. Catches win matches. We have seen a brilliant catch taken by Burtal. Edge, why is there no slipping? Why is there no slipping? I said it in the first innings, I'll say it again in the second. You've just seen one rag past the outside edge. Here's the catch. How good is this? Flying through the air. Look at that, Burtel. Simply brilliant. And that to backpedaling, not easy. And practice makes man's perfect. Still no slip in position. Slow in the air. All eyes will be now on Asif Khan and Ali Shan Sharafu. These two batters are the leading run scorers of the tournament. Number one and number two. Sharafu in second, Khan in first. They're striking at 170 and 180 respectively. This game could end in a heartbeat if they don't get one or both of these batters in the next two or three overs. They have to get wickets 
as a consequence, I think Rowett Powdell has to attack. I know it's difficult because the required run rate is less than a run a ball. But you'll lose by that way if you don't take, take wickets. You have to attack. If you don't, you can't win the contest. Absolutely. That too, when you're defending a modest total of 120, quite surprisingly, till now no slip in position. Can we see a slip for the final ball of this over? Especially as if Khan was committed on the front foot. Ah, good idea. Rohit himself in the slip. Uh, goes over extra cover. He has some other plans. Asif Khan Behruz ends though with the flourish. Flighted delivery and rightly punished. Well, what a strike this is. This is the danger of big Asif Khan. He's, he's worked out the T20i game. It wasn't fast in coming to him. He's tossed it up to try and bring that slip into play. But what a stroke. I thought long off for a moment was in the game. Not even for a moment. Big strike from the big man. Nine gone, 65 for two. Gulshan Jada continue into the 10th now. Short, wide, carved away. Not where you want to be bowling on a good batting surface. And the runs are coming quickly. Back-to-back -back boundaries, six from the last ball of the previous. Now four more. He has been in completely different zone throughout this tournament. Ali Shan Sharfu, the young lad, not afraid to cut hard. He's managing to go over the point fielder. Getting a much needed boundary. Runs are coming thick and fast. He has been a bit wavered though. He has got that wicket of Vishnu Sukumaran. Gulshanja leaking runs will not help the cause of U Nepal. Yeah, nine T20s these two have played coming in today. Official T20Is. They'll have played much more than that prior to status coming in. At the moment, the tail of the tape is 5-4 to Nepal. It looks very much like it's going to be 5-5. Five, five. Is there any way back when you have 119 on the board with the, the batting pitches, the surfaces that we've seen? The problem has been the bowlers leaking runs, though they have got Mulva Seem a bit early. It was around a ball, crucial knock played by Vishnu Sukumar on 28 of 28. Trying to play inside out, thick outside edge. Are we missing a quality spinner in the lineup of Nepal? This has been the story so far. Wilshanja getting a wicket in his first year, but going for plenty of runs. Do they have? A spinner in their ranks, someone who can come and who can bowl a couple of overs and get a wicket. A leg break bowler, an ideal situation at this stage. Edged and gone. Gulshan Jah just keeps doing it against the UAE. What an extraordinary stroke. You need 50 off 63. You've just hit your last ball for six. You try to repeat the dose. You snick off. UE may still win this contest. It won't be thanks to Asif Khan. Trying to be a hero here, Asif Khan. Poor shot selection. Taking on Gulshanja. We'll be having a close look on that front foot. Whether it's a legal ball. But they know they have got their man. The big man, the run machine. The poor shot selection. Some serious pace generated by Gulshanja. They do just want to check this front foot. Looks absolutely fine to me. May need the other angle, but it looks like there's something behind on first view there. 
Should be nothing wrong with that. Just ask for another angle. Will get us to the drinks break if it's a legal delivery. The Nepal fans, they just keep singing. Nepal, Nepal, the chants that ring out in the background. It's tight, but it's fine. Something behind the line there. And it's a fair delivery. So it will be the third wicket. It will get us to the drinks break as the umpires take some much-needed watermelon. Asif Khan thought he was coming back. Off you go, sir. You're dismissed for 10. It's 70 for 3. Saeed Hyder, keeper batter. I just want to give him one more very special mention. I thought it was an outstanding spirit of cricket in the first innings. There was a horrible collision between Mohammed Wazim, excuse me, between Junaid Sadiq and Karen KC. Start them young, the fans. Look at that. Lovely to see. And it was the youngster who intentionally chose to hold the ball. So great credit to him. There's a great spirit of cricket history at this venue, of course. But now he's got work to do with the bat. Asif Sheikh won the award back in 2022 at this venue. And that should be in the mix too. Credit to him. Down the leg side, that'll be a wide. Good glove work from Asif Sheikh, that ICC Spirit of Cricket award winner in 2022. One more look at this dismissal, Mudasir. UAE may well still win this contest. They need less than five and over. Quite remarkable shot. Full marks should be given to Gulshan Jais, especially against the likes of Asif Khan. Bowling a bit fuller and inviting him to go big. And a mistake has been committed by Asif Khan Behrouz. Smart thinking. Gone for some runs. The important thing is he has got two big wickets in his kitty. What a comeback after going for a boundary on the very first ball. Keeping things tight. The credit should be given to Ali Shan Sharifu. He has seen the likes of Mohammad Wasim, Vishnu Sukumaran, Asif Khan, Behrouz back in the hut. But he's applying himself quite well out there in the middle. Not at all in a hurry. Calm and composed, Ali Shan Sharifu. Just remarkable how little strike he's had. At the end of this ball, there'll be 60 legal deliveries thus far. He's faced 17 of them. But he has done well, I agree with you. In Nepal, well, they're in need of... Absolute miracles from here, but they're still scrapping away. They're still fighting hard. It's the halfway stage of the chase in terms of overs. They're well past the halfway total. It's 72 for three.
72 for 3. Everything looking easy for UAE from here on. Gulshan Jha with the wicket in the previous over. Semi-final 1 from the Oman Cricket Academy. Lalit to continue. Nicely played. Very good shot beside the header. A slip in place. Uh, Mikhail and it's front of Mehta with me in the com box. Mikhail, 47 from 59 deliveries at the moment. This almost looks like a cakewalk with seven wickets in hand. But cricket is a funny game. Lot of supporters for Nepal. They've come in large numbers. This is probably one of the highest number of attendance that probably the Oman Cricket Academy has seen apart from the World Cup and the top, top games. Oh yes, 47 of 59. Seven wickets in hand. Nepal need a burst of wickets here. Two to three. Only then we can hope for a miracle. Funny things happen in cricket. Nicely bowled again. And this is where I feel the Nepali fielders need to be more alert. I've been saying this time and again. They are on the edge of the 30-yard circle. They are allowing easy singles and allowing the pressure to just go off UAE. Each time they've got the dot ball percentage increased. In my opinion, they have nothing to lose from here, Nepal. They can go all guns blazing, get those fielders inside, probably get one extra fielder, which they're doing at the moment. There are five fielders inside the circle. But the singles need to be cut out. That's the most important part. Well bowled. Well bowled from Lalit. A lot of this will come down to the spinners now. All the Nepal fans have gone quiet here. Quite understandably so as well. But a huge turnout at the Oman Cricket Academy for the first semi-final. Flighted. And this is brilliant. Brilliant from Nepal. They'll need to get things very, very tight. The required run rate is also not in their favour. Just around 5 is what UAE require. And they have a lot of firepower up their sleeves as well. Say that the wicket keeper. And he'll like to keep it a little watching. Wickets is what Nepal need. 11 gone with 75 for 3. If you look at that Manhattan, you'd realize that those wickets of the Nepalese batters between the 10th and the 20th over is where they broke their back. And there were early blows as well. In return, just three wickets for UAE. And they've been controlled, con complete control. No scoreboard pressure whatsoever from Nepal. The fielding has also not been of that, that aggressive nature that, that is required to win games like these. And they have nothing to lose from here, right? If they lose this game, they go into that third place match. So, in turn, if they can go for a win, they can bring those, they can challenge the UAE batters, bring probably four, five, probably six fielders inside the circle, create some extra pressure. That's going to be the way ahead and this is not going to be helping them because four free runs from the bowling of Burtel. Well, Burtel has been amongst wickets in recent times, but he's not your frontline leg spinner. And in a current situation like this, if he's delivering deliveries down the leg side, he's certainly not helping his side's cause. That one just about going down leg and helped away by the batter. Very neatly done. Complete execution there by Alishan and Saeed Heather in particular. Bortel once again. Leaking free runs to UAE. This is not going to be in favour of Nepal at any moment. If you just go back to the toss and you just see the, how things panned out, you'd want to believe that played a crucial role, but that's no excuse. Looking for an expensive drive and this has got the gap as well. Probably should have been two. Nicely fielded at long off. Had to get around it and released it as well. A good throw from the deep. 
what a match you is having everything going their way they've not got a foot wrong here it does not matter if ue finishes the game in 16 overs or the 18 19th over and that's where a little bit of more intent is required from nepal here front of the bottom line is they don't have a total to defend as simple as that 119 in a semi final on a flat wicket is next to impossible if you want to defend unless you get something magical going that's where i feel you did well with the ball well bowled and yet there is a single that will be conceded for this to be something magical there needs to be something stupid from ue and that that could only be attempted if there's a little bit of pressure applied by nepal probably bring in the long off bring in the sweeper cover ask them to do something out of the box it's brilliant bowling but it's still going to be allowing ue to take singles this is my concern looking at things Thirty-seven or forty-nine, UAE have that one foot across the finishing line in the semis to make it into the finals of the men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. Well bowled, and that'll wind up of Burtel. Eight run over, and UAE are eighty-three for three at the end of twelve. Eighty-three for three. Good partnership here between Said Heather and Ali Shan. We keep talking about Nepal's performance all through the tournament. How good has UAE turned up this morning? Cut, cut well. There is protection in the deep. They will be pushing for the second, and they will get it easily. This is pretty mediocre from Nepal at the moment. They'll need to do something different here. Just get the impression the signs are ominous now. Signs are obvious. In terms of where this match is tilting towards, and it's only ma a matter of time. We have another matchup lined up later on. Oman taking on Hong Kong, China. That semi-final two. Need to see who are the two teams who make it to the finals of the men's T20 Premier Cup 2024 to be played on 21st of April. What an event this has been, Pranav. Even the rain gods could not stop a single match. All matches were played. Results out. Everything delighting a cricket fan. Or can we put it as the rain gods did visit majority number of the matches to enjoy the action here at the Oman Cricket Academy? It's been incredible, wonderful visuals. Need a wicket here, Nepal. Can Lalit provide one? A leading edge not travelling to him. Things not going in Nepal's favour at the moment. Oh yes, you've got to really congratulate Oman Cricket Association, the Asian Cricket Council, our stakeholders, partners, TCM, our commercial partners for dishing out a lovely tournament. And in the background, you can see the Oman team just about disembarking from their bus. They're all set to play the second semi-final against Hong Kong, China. Cut away. Work to do for the field and the deep, and he'll have to give up that chase. That's because the ball wins the race. Much needed boundary here, and UAE getting closer to the finals. This is incredible. Very good from UAE. Very professional. They've not given any opportunity whatsoever for Nepal to make it back into this game. They've controlled this chase, and they've controlled this chase really well. Majority of the shots have been all along the ground. And that's where UAE have not stood any chance whatsoever. 
Ali Shan. He's a young lad and he's making things happen here at the Amman Cricket Academy. 13 gone, 91 for 3 in UAE. That's the coach, assistant coach, Mazar, and the man who made things happen, Akib Ilyas. Two man of the match awards. The third was third one was just away from him. Got three wickets, did get runs as well. How how rare is it when you've got thirty runs, thirty odd runs to your name, and you've got three wickets to your account as well, and still you're not the man of the match in a T20 encounter. Meanwhile, UAE are all set to just about grab that winning position in this game. Full delivery, misfield, sums up how the day has been for Nepal as well. Just not being able to dominate. All said and done, the Nepali fans, my heart goes for them. They've come, come out of the Oman Cricket Academy in large numbers and they've enjoyed these facilities here. It's been a beautiful day to play cricket. And yes, things haven't been in favor of Nepal for majority part of this match. But it's incredible to enjoy your heroes right from probably 70 meters, 80 meters, 100 meters away from you, in action, live, and that's what visiting a match does to you. Paddle sweep has brought out, and this ball is going to be cut off by Karan Casey, and a huge roar immediately as Karan Casey comes into action. One must admit the decibel levels of the roars also has just about gone down as this game has progressed, indicating which way it's tilting as well. Rohit Baudel is trying everything he can from Kushal Burtel's leg spin to Kushal Malla's left arm orthodox. Ali Shan has stood tall, 31 of 28. You need somebody on top to bat till the end. This is really easy at the moment. You have been spot on in the semi-final number one and they've almost got their spot into the finale. One leg across, the other leg is just about to go across in the, in the meanwhile. Fended and fended well. Oh yes, just a matter of time as we keep talking about it. Uh, all focus will be on the next, next match as well. Another single towards uh, backward square leg. Six coming off this over, 14 gone, it's 97 for three. That's the Hong Kong China side. They somehow managed to find a way out in this tournament despite having some off games, but they played extremely well in that last outing of theirs. Babar Hayat, 83 of 35 deliveries, 9 sixes. There he is as you talk about him. Good matchup lined up at Oman Cricket Academy. It's Oman versus Hong Kong China, semi final two from Turf One. And we'll have clarity on who the finalists are. And then it remains and boils down to Judgment Day. Who do you think starts as favourites? The home team or the team that has favoured on luck through? I would say the form team, and that's been Oman. They've not dropped a single game in the tournament. But Hong Kong, China come with their fair share of threats. And that Oman will be wary of. Got to wait and watch what happens out here. A one-sided contest on offing. Sweeps it. This could be very close. Finger goes up. Lalit Rajban, she gets a wicket. But is it enough or a little too late? Said Heather has to walk back. The keeper. Loves to play the sweep shot 
And the crowd are finally having something to cheer for. Things haven't been in the favor of Nepal. And finally a wicket walks in. Lalit is the bowler. And impacted right in front of the stumps. Not a lot that Rahul Asher would have needed to th think about. As Syed Heather walks back. 14 of 15 for him. And the, the, this is only going to be made a little difficult if Nepal can pick a few more wickets. 97 for the loss of 4 UAE. Two youngsters in the middle, Ali Shan, and he's been joined in by Ayan Khan, the left arm spinner. Such a delight to see the UAE side promoting the young guns, preparing them. Just like the way Ayan Afzal Khan has grown as a cricketer, the maturity is showing at such a young age. Brilliant. Ayan Khan, he's got a few man of the matches, one in this tournament so far. He'll have to wait to get off the mark at the moment. And this is where Alisha needs to allow the batter to settle in. They need 23 and 33, he's just trying to push for a single, should not apply as unnecessary pressure on the young man. Would want some more intent from Nepal. There are five fielders inside the circle. They could probably get in a sixth because they need to make something happen here. Probably push Ayan Khan to play a shot which he wouldn't have want to on another occasion. Four dot balls in Aronova so far and a wicket as well. And believe it or not, he's opened the field. What are you doing here, Lalit? I can't believe my eyes here, Mikhail. What's happening with Nepal? Nicely played. Off the mark is Ayan with a single down to long off. That brings Ali Shan. I reckon Ali Shan will just about look for the vacant spaces and the big hits. Just when I was asking for an extra fielder, the captain decided to reduce the pressure. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Lalit. Flighted, driven. This is very easy for Nepal at the moment. They're going down. They need to do something special. 15 overs gone. One shot of 100 for the loss of four. Well, five overs remain, 21 required to win for the UAE to advance to the final and dream of a return to the Asia Cup. They haven't been there for a while. Nepal, the reigning champions. Hong Kong, the previous two editions, were the side that got those big games against the big guns of Asia. 
credit to Nepal. They've had the worst of the conditions. They've really fought hard. May not be enough. Sharif, who's playing a very mature knock, perfectly measured and calculated for the situation of the game. But Nepal, they've just kept fighting as I'm joined by Mudassar Ali. Once again, the toss playing a crucial role, meaning the toss and opting to bowl first. The bowler is doing a pretty good job and restricting Nepal below 120. 100 up with that single. Very watchful, Ayan Khan. 2018, they lost that final in Malaysia to Hong Kong. It was a over reduced game because of rain. 25 overs game played between Hong Kong and UAE. Emphatic when it was for Hong Kong then the previous year. Going down on one knee and connects well. Goes between deep square leg and deep mid wicket. He's in completely different zone. The young lad performing quite well with the bat for his team. Yeah, what a wonderfully judged and paced innings. It hasn't had the fireworks that he provided earlier in the tournament. Hasn't needed to. Look at the way he swept that from a long way outside the off stump and it bisects those two fielders in the deep beautifully. Gets the UAE ever closer and follows it up with a single seven from the over. That's more than enough. They can see the finish line. It's just 14 more to win for UAE. 106 for four. He's tried everything he can, Rohit Powell, with the exception of one man. No Avanash Bahara, noticeably absent from the seven bowlers that have been used. He's even used Kushal Bertel, who I don't believe has bowled up to this game in the tournament. Might have bowled once in the group stages. And that's who he's going to turn to again now. He's going to stick with spin, not trusting his death specialist. Did bowl just a couple of overs against Malaysia without success. And it's a final toss of the dice that's not going to work. Sharafu cashes in, gorgeous on the part-time leg breaks. The UAE, they're home and hosed. They have been exceptional today as this classic rivalry writes its latest chapter. And not to remember for Alishan Sharafu to losing three big wickets. This boy is doing wonders with the bat. Calm and composed, now shifting the gears at the right time. Hit hard, some work for the long off fielder. Running hard is Ayan Afzal Khan and responding to the call was Ali Shan Sharifu. Lightning quick, these two youngsters. Raul Asher is convinced himself to just go up and double check. I think he thought at first it's probably not out, but technology's there. The game is all but done. You just need a maximum to, to close it out. They'll do that in this over the next you'd imagine, but understandably, he just wants a quick look. Good throw, wasn't it, from Karen Casey? Aggressive running from Ayan Khan, which we haven't seen much of from UAE. They've been very cautious out there with the speed of the Nepal fielders, but he's safely home. I think Asher knew he was home, but he just thought he'd check. So not out. The green light will be given, and it is given just off camera. Well, he deserved 50, and he deserved to be not out. He's played really maturely. He's now the leading run scorer in the tournament. He certainly played a bit more cleverly than Asif Khan did. Got out to a, well, a rather remarkable stroke, but it's not going to cost you a shot there through to the final. They've been really good value for it as well, haven't they? They've been excellent in their performance. They've completely outplayed the opposition. Absolutely, and the future looks bright for you, the way the... Youngsters perform especially in this uh, tournament, the likes of Alishan Sharfu, Ayan Abdul Khan, Haider Wasisha, another new entry in this side, just 22 years old. On to the pads, not at all in a hurry. It's a back to back 
finals for UAE in ACC Men's Premier Cup. They lost to Nepal in the big final 2023. Now getting better off Nepal in the semi-finals. It has been an incredible performance. Especially men in pink and blue. Single has been taken with ease. Backing the youngsters are the selectors of UAE and responding to their call. They did pretty well. The experience and the youth doing a good job. Slowly people going back home. They came in numbers to support Nepal. Yeah, they'll be devastated. Such a great story last September, wasn't it? Rohit Paudel, Virat Kohli, Babur Azam. Memories to last a lifetime. They'll have to wait. They'll have the third place playoff to come as UAE just need three to win. It's 117 for four. Shinjap returns for his third over. And that's going to be that. Maybe not just yet. I think an incredible piece of fielding will allow Alison Sharafu to get to 50. The scores are going to be tied. It'll be a second T20I 50. A wonderful knock, beautifully paced and judged for the circumstances. Just 21 years of age, played with real maturity. Take a bow, Alishan Sharafu getting to his 50 when he has lost his senior partner. He made sure to stay till the end. Good job done by the fast bowler, Karan Casey, stopping those runs. Just a couple of runs will be added to the total. And in the process, Alishan Sharafu yet again going past 50 runs mark in this tournament. What a tournament this boy is having. The boy from Waraka doing wonders, taking his team into the finals of 2024. Stand and delivered using that pace goes over the point making sure UAE sail into that finals of ACC Men's Premier Cup 2024 it's back to back finals we talk about UAE in ACC Men's Premier Cup yeah they've avenged their defeats three big ones last year in three critical matches but it's been all about the UAE today on the day, they've completely outplayed Nepal, who were their nemesis in 2023. But this man, Sharafu, alongside, well, a quite outstanding bowling performance. And the young guns it is. Of the UAE, the Sharafus, the, the young Ayan Afsal Khan, Omid Rahman, add his name to the list, Mohammed Farouk too. They just keep producing young talent. Remarkable to think they won't be at the World Cup. They're great pals off the pitch. Nepal will be devastated, make no mistakes, but warm congratulations. Lovely spirit of cricket on show from Bahara, from Mala. And this has been a brilliant performance. Spare a thought for Dependra Singh Iri, who's had such a good tournament. He won't be in the final. Nepal will have to play tomorrow in the third place playoff with a spot in the Emerging Teams Cup on the line. But there's shades of 2022 here, isn't there? Unbeaten in the group stages, Nepal. But into the knockouts when it's mattered most, the UAE, well, they've been magnificent. And they are going to be, for me, whatever Oman do this afternoon, I think they'll be the favourites come Sunday. They're such a good team. They're getting better and better. Oman will need to play well this afternoon and they'll need to play well again come Sunday. They recovered well, especially that loss against Oman. They bounced back quite well. A big sigh of relief for UAE. El Clasico. Now it's five all in T20 International for UAE and Nepal. 
this boy the wonder boy with the bat ali shan sharf with magical knock helping his team to sail into that finals you can look at the batting card really superb from sharf it was all it required such a mature innings credit to vishnu sukumaran as well who contributed with his 28 and then short and sweet from kan and hyder reality was despite that early breakthrough despite getting the big wicket Mohammed was aim early 120 on a surface like this here and Muscat was just never going to be enough seven bowlers have been used by the captain of Nepal everyone struggled couple of wickets for Gulshan Kumar Jha 2.2 overs pick of the bowlers 21 runs but Sompal Kami going for plenty of runs bit wayward bit expensive but got the big wicket of Mohammed Wasim current case he struggled to break the partnership Kushal Burtal Lalit Raj Banshi they tried their best couple of extras have been leaked by the bowling team but at the end UAE managed to go past that 120 in just 17.2 overs yeah, the big omission there no Abhinash Bahara he could be harsh and question well why are you picking him if you don't bowl him he's certainly not there for his batting and look it's always going to be difficult just 120 on the board let's look at the best of the highlights the vintage Mohammed Wasim stroke was followed up by maybe his fragility the one that comes back into him full in length kami was pumped up his first wicket in a while it brought the crowd to life the problem was they weren't able to apply the pressure despite kami getting that wicket he was expensive too 28 from his 3 overs on a day when everything just felt out of reach there was no shortage of effort from nepal they were just simply outplayed by a very fine uae side today of good looking drives and this was a no look shot from vishnu and then this happened one of the spectacular catches this tournament from burtal out of no way taking that catch to get rid of vishnu sukumaran An important knock from vishnu then came in asif khan he was in a hurry a good looking shot from ali and poor poor shot selection wanted to be the hero here and then came another youngster haider wasisha i wonder how much of, of the rivalry and the history comes into that shot from asif khan he wanted to smash five sixes and end it quickly raj banchi i thought he bowled very nicely the primary spinner it's a big surprise they it's almost a sign of desperation wasn't it they tossed the ball to kushal bertel rather than abhinesh bahara ja tried hard but ultimately despite the friendship off the pitch the rivalry it's been won by uae they were superb today for me the most impactful player on the pitch the two right arm seamers to start with junaid sadiq and omid ram and the youngster outstanding with the new ball those four overs they set the tone they changed the game nepal were always behind it from that point and they never really got back into it despite sandeep jora's best efforts and his 50 was trumped by alasran sharafuz 55 not out what a good knock that was it means the UAE advanced to the final they're one step away from getting back to an Asia Cup the stuff of dreams for the men from the Emirates it'll wrap up our coverage in the commentary box here but we'll be back in a few moments time with Mikhail with the post match presentation the UAE they've taken the win by 6 wickets
Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the post-match presentation ceremony of the first semi-final between UAE and Nepal in the Men's T20 Premier Cup. Well, fair to say it's been a one-sided contest, but before we get further with this, we would like to take this opportunity to thank our patrons and especially Oman Cricket Association and Asian Cricket Council for putting on such a fine event. At the same time, we would like to take this opportunity to thank our official streaming partner, India, Fancode, official broadcast partner, Nepal Kantipur TV, official partners, Dafa News, 1X Bat, Babu 88 Sports and commercial partner, TCM. Well, fair to say Nepal have been outplayed and outclassed by a thorough professional performance of the UAE. Put into bat, Nepal managed only 119 for 9 in their 20 overs. The UAE team's discipline and tidiness certainly coming to the fore. And in the chase, Mohamed Wasim and his boys went home very easily. They got that target in 17.2 overs with 6 wickets in hand. Fair to say, they are the first team to make it into the finals of the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. What a commanding win has been by them. Just the right time to have a chat with both the captains. I'll firstly like to call the captain who came second in this contest, Rohit Podel from Nepal. Rohit, tough luck. You had 4-4 four and four in the league stages and in the knockouts you just faltered. Where do you think things went wrong? They're well documented in the batting, but if you could point out a certain reason. Yeah, I think uh, the the way uh, they bowled in the power play, especially uh, with the new ball, uh, I think they utilized the condition really well. Especially credit goes to U uh, UAE bowlers, seamers especially. And then after uh, we didn't have that partnership uh, where where we we would have uh, came out from that situation. And I think overall, as a, as as a unit, I think UAE bowled really well throughout the game. And yeah, I think as the main reason would be our batting. Right, it's an age-old rivalry. Like you'll have played around 10 matches now, five you've won, five you've won after this game. At this venue, you've not been able to breach them, that's one thing. But at home, you'll have been very dangerous. How do you look at this contest and what's the reason maybe you're not putting it past them in a venue like Oman Cricket Academy? Yeah, I think uh, in in home condition we are doing really well. Uh, especially uh, the 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 task is to come out uh, out of our country and win win there. So yeah, we were working on it, uh, and especially uh, I think today's game uh, UAE, UAE had done really well today. In hindsight, you feel the toss played a crucial role. I know you don't want to get into all of that, but was that an important toss? I think uh, toss it's it's not in, in our control, but still I think they utilized the condition really well, especially in the first first half of the game, and yeah, credit goes to them. Right, uh, you all have played very well, and you have another match to go for the third place, and you've been gracious in defeat too. Nevertheless, tough luck, good luck for the coming game. Thank you, Captain of Nepal, Rohit Paudel. Well, falling short this time around, just the right time to call upon Mohammad Wasim, the captain of the victorious UAE team who have also made it the finals of the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup. Congratulations, Mohamed Wasim. Thorough performance, clinical, comprehensive. You got everything right. Yeah, first of all, thanks to my dear Allah and uh, my bowlers bowling and they bowled today exceptionally well. You, ha you, you gave a ball to every bowler? Or like You gave the bowling to practically everybody and everyone got a wicket. Conditions were certainly favourable to you? Yeah, actually I was, I was looking for the good bowler, for the good conditions. So everyone's going was in our side uh, when I took Bajil he took wicket for us and um, everyone bowled everybody. exceptionally as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. your new ball bowlers a word on your new ball bowlers Junaid Siddiq and Omid Rehman I mean, you must have been delighted the way they got the ball to move yeah Junaid is a very experienced bowler and he showed today to everyone the bowler like Omad uh, he bowled excellent spell first three overs actually uh, to be honest, everyone bowled very well. Right. There's a lot of talk about you know, the UAE team having a lot of changes in their side, in their squad. But you came into the young side, you made some bold, brave decisions. As a captain, you must be feeling vindicated and very good about it. Uh, no, uh, as a captain, I'm very happy with this team. Everyone is very energetic and uh, everyone is giving 100%. So I'm very happy with this team and uh, inshallah they will do better in upcoming games. Right, they give more than 100% over here, let me tell you that. They were brilliant and so were you. Good luck for the final. I'm sure you'll be waiting to see who will be, but all the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Captain of the UAE team, Mohamed Wasim. Right, just the right time to also call upon on stage, uh, Salim Shahid, the match referee. He'll be giving away the player of the match medallion. Quite a few bowlers showed that they could go out there and get the ball to talk in moving conditions. You had Junaid Siddiq 2 for 26, Ali Nasir 2 for 28, Basil Hamid 2 for 4 as well. From Nepal, you had Sandeep Jora getting a 50. But there's one man who stood tall in the chase and steadied the ship and uh, got UAE home. It is Alishan Sharfu, the opener. He scored 55 unbeaten runs in 41 deliveries. What an innings he played and powered UE into the final of 
the ACC Men's T20 Premier Cup. It's been an absolute brilliant display of skill, precision and discipline as well. Alishan, that was an Alishan performance by you. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, fortunately, we found, our, uh, we found ourselves in the finals and uh, uh, hopefully we, we go all the way and uh, make it into the Asia Cup. Right. What's the role been given to you by a captain? Depending on situations, or he's allowed you to play your style of cricket? Uh, he's been quite lenient. He said, uh, I mean, he's obviously given the license to do uh, to play however I want to. But today was was uh, was a bit of a low score, uh, low chase. Um, so uh, it would only make sense if if, if somebody batted through uh, because you know these low chases can be a bit tricky at times. And uh, yeah, that was just the plan to bat uh, throughout. Uh, what in a rivalry against Nepal? I mean, it's an age-old one. It's been touted and labelled, much hyped across both the countries. Extra pressure there, or you just take it the way it comes? Uh, not really. I mean, obviously, Nepal, you have been good games uh, in the past as well. Uh, they had the better of us in the World Cup qualifiers, and uh, um, obviously, we've played each other quite a bit. Uh, but obviously, um, the more the pressure, the more fun it is. So, um, yeah, just try to um, soak in the pressure and uh, get the best out of yourself. You're certainly thriving on pressure. Very well done. Congratulations. A very elegant and efficient innings. Uh, I'm sure you'll want to replicate it in the coming days. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Player of the match in this big semi-final between UAE and Nepal, Alishan Sharafude, 55 unbeaten runs. We have another big semi-final lined up in a short while from now. Oman taking on Hong Kong, China on this very ground. Stay tuned for that. Don't go anywhere. For now, though, from everybody in the presentation ceremony, it's goodbye.